What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live watch along. And today it is Burnley, Burnley against Arsenal um, at Turf Moor, and uh, hopefully three point collecting today, and hopefully um, a few goals for Arsenal as well, just as we did against West Ham. Second team we're playing in a uh, claret and blue within the space of a week. I think we'll be in the same uh, kit today as well. The yellow. Um, well, I was going to say camouflage, but yeah, um, yeah, well, we're well, less said about that kit, the better. If we win the league, then, uh, I'll probably buy the kit, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, the same team people, the exact, um, same starting 11. Um, we did, uh, the preview yesterday and I said in the preview for me, I would have possibly brought Tomiyasu back, um, for Kivior at left back, however, um, Tomiyasu is not in the squad at all, which is very interesting considering the rumours were that he was going to be back for this game. Um, so, yeah, exactly the same starting 11. David Rea continues in goal. Ben White's at right back. Um, Kivior's at left back. Gabriel and Saliba at centre back. Declan Rice um, with Odegaard and Kai Havertz in midfield. Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left. Leandro Trossard through the middle, Bossardino. Uh, the bench is interesting. Aaron Ramsdale, Eddie Nketiah, Cedric Suarez, Jorginho, Reese Nelson, Mohamed Elneny, Bandera, and um, James Sweet, a young defender, and Emil Smith-Rowe. Uh, people saying Keith Sweat's on the bench. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe does return. Good news. Um, we did say in the week, the rumours were that the two players that were likely to be back were um, Tommy Asu and Zinchenko. None of them make the bench. Um, so very interesting that Smith-Rowe is the one that is returned. Great to see Smith-Rowe back. Waneri doesn't make the bench. Don't get that. Is that injury? I mean, um, so we've got Sweet and Bandera on the bench. Antonio Banderas and uh, Keith Sweat on the bench. Uh, listen, the bench is, as uh, what I've been saying for most of the season, people, um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the park bench that you walk past in the, in the park at night. You know, it's nothing... There's nothing pretty about that bench. I'm happy to see Smith Rowe back. There ain't a lot there. Still no Timber. Still no Fabio Vieira. No Thomas Partey. No Tommy Asu. No Zinchenko. No Gabriel Jesus. What I always find really interesting with Arsenal is why do we hear? And I get it. It's a press conference. Managers don't like to give out information to other managers in the press conference. But why do we hear that? Oh. Don't worry, uh, Gabriel Jesus, it's a small knock, he'll be out for a few days. Two and a half weeks later, still not even on the bench. Thomas Partey, don't worry guys, he'll be back in a few weeks. This was in, what, September they were saying that? We're now in the middle of February, this guy still hasn't kicked a ball for us. You know, Fabio Vieira, where is he? I thought he was meant to be back, still not back. Zinchenko and Jesus, again, I'm thinking Pep's done as dirty on that one. Um... Selling us two injury-prone players who, who constantly get injured. So it's very frustrating. We always hear it's a few days, few weeks. It turns out to be weeks and months. Tommy Asu goes to the Asia Cup. Plays, I'm pretty sure, in every game up until they get knocked out of the competition. Comes back to Arsenal. He's injured. He misses the first game. We're told he'll be back this week. And he's not back this week. So it is frustrating. However, however... It's Burnley away, they're second from bottom. We should still have enough to win this game. So, you know, that that's all I would say is that um we shouldn't have many concerns. But and yeah, listen, maybe he is saving them for the Porto game, which is a massive game on Wednesday night. However, I think it's always important if you've been injured for a number of weeks or months to get a little bit of game time um under your belt. Um, before going into a key game. And it's a, Pavel, it's a great question. Who, who is to blame? I don't know. There seems to have been an injury issue going on at Arsenal for 10, 15, 20 years since Arsene Wenger. A lot of people say the training ground. They used to say under Wenger that the training wasn't physical enough, which meant when players went into games, they weren't used to taking strong physical contact. That was something that I heard. Um, 
but it's still happening now, and I'm sure training has changed. Maybe it is the training ground. I don't know. But listen, we focus on today. We're playing against Burnley today, away from home. Burnley's form in the last five games, as you can see here, has been terrible. Lost to Liverpool, drew to Fulham, lost to Man City, drew to Luton, and lost to Tottenham. No win in their last five. They have been awful. Um, I was very confident yesterday in the in the preview, and I still expect Arsenal to win this game comfortably. Um, oh, Liverpool are in. Is Gakpo 4-1 four, four to Liverpool. Cody Gakpo has made it 4-1. Now that... Again, this puts more pressure and expectation on Arsenal. I was actually looking at this weekend's games thinking maybe Brentford could do something against Liverpool. Maybe not win, but I thought maybe they could get a draw. Liverpool have smashed them all over the place. 4-1 at Brentford. Uh, Cody Gapo there has just scored. So um, they have been shocking. The, the one thing I would say, Ivan Tony, another goal. That's four goals um, since coming back from his ban. Crazy to think Ivan Tony has got the same amount of goals as Gabriel Jesus, and the guy's been banned for six months. So, tells you a lot about his goal-scoring form. But, yeah, um, definitely. We're going to have a look at the Premier League table in a second, actually, because goal difference... Listen, the, the way this is going, it is a three-horse race at the moment. Goal difference is effectively another point. You know, if you finish on the same points, goal difference is going to be a factor. So we have got to use these opportunities. Burnley away, you need to go there and smoke them, you know. Um, Tony definitely hasn't. I've watched most of this game. He hasn't played that well, but he scored at the end of the day in a game where they've been annihilated. So uh, Brentford are in big trouble, by the way. I, you know, I think they're going to get dragged into a relegation battle. Um but yeah, goal difference is going to be a big factor and very important. Um, in terms of the starting eleven, listen, uh, if Tommy Asso isn't back, Smith Rowe's not fully fit, it made sense. I thought maybe he would have gone Jorginho, but of course, he wants Havertz to continue to play well and try and prove that, you know, justify why he bought him and uh, so on and so forth. Good opportunity for him again to try and, and maybe score a goal. The Real Gunner, thoughts on the Mbappe rumours? I mean, the last two shows I've done, I've spoke about in, in quite a lot of detail. Um, listen, I like the fact that the manager said we should be in the conversation. That's all I wanted him to say to me eight months ago when I asked the question. And people said, you're crazy for asking that question. Turns out it's not a bad question. However, listen, we both know Kylian Mbappe is not coming to Arsenal. We know that the Cronkays won't pay the money. I don't know whether Arteta could even handle Kylian Mbappe. And, and most of all, Kylian Mbappe is not going to choose Arsenal ahead of Real Madrid. So it's a nice dream. I'm all about the positive dreams. He'll end up at Real Madrid. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. But yeah, listen, I, I would love us to go for him. But I'm, I don't think we can get him. Uh, the fact that February has been a month where you effectively need to go on a 15-match winning run to stand a chance is absurd. I mean, listen, let's have a look at the Premier League table. I said this about two weeks ago um, when we were looking at the Premier League table and the fixtures. I said, well, now we've got 14 games left if you look at today. I think you've got to win probably at least 12 of those last 14, in my opinion. Last season, to win the league, five defeats, I think, was the maximum. We've already lost four. I don't think you're going to get away with losing six or seven games and still winning the title. We've won 16 out of 24. We've drawn four and we've lost four. Liverpool have only lost two, but they've drawn six. Man City have lost three and drawn four. I think Arsenal can probably afford to lose one and draw one at the maximum, which would mean another... Another, what, 12 victories um, to maybe win the title. And even that might not be enough. You know, Man City have won 10 games in a row in all competition. Arsenal need to win a lot of games. A lot of games. And as I said, we've got a hard run, people. We've got a difficult run. We've got to go to Old Trafford. We've got to go to Tottenham. We've got to go to Manchester City. Um, I think we've got to go to Brighton still as well. So we've got some big and difficult games. Um you know, to make sure we handle this. I mean, very interesting now. That's Liverpool, five points clear. A win would get us two points behind. City play later against Chelsea. They've got two games in hand. If City win both games, 
Um, obviously, they will be a point clear of uh, of Liverpool. Uh, Michael said it's a it's a dream big C, but could KSC do what they did for Jokic contract wise? Exactly. I don't know how it works in in the uh, in the NBA with contracts and stuff. I know it's a little bit different to the Premier League, but you know Jokic has one of the biggest contracts in NBA history. So you know the guy's worth fifteen billion. So I, I don't see why Mbappe should be unattainable financially. But yeah, listen, the, the problem's always going to be convincing the player. Uh, and that will be the biggest issue. Uh, we need to perform today. It, it's crazy that we're in such a good run. But what, I, what I've always said is, when Jurgen Klopp gets in a title race, he will push you to the wire, right? When Manchester City are in a title race, more often than not, they win it or they will at least go to the wire. We are not going to be able to drop stupid points and get there. It's quite deflating at times because you watch your team win 6-0 and you make no progress because they, they both go and win their games. And, you know, obviously beating Liverpool was massive. But, you know, you, you've got to consistently just win and win. And I said Arsenal need to win seven, eight, nine games in a row just to hope that Liverpool will lose a game or... You know, they play Manchester City in a few weeks, so we know at least there one of them will drop points. So psychologically, I think more than anything, the title race is very draining. And, and that's what probably Arsenal ran out of. You know, I think we got a little bit fatigued last season at the end of the season. But what is key is keeping that core of our team fit. I think last season, um, the fact that Saliba got injured, Jesus got injured... Then Partey's form dipped, Saka, Saka's dipped as well. I think we got caught out there. If we can keep, you know, Saliba, Gabriel, Declan Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, Trossard, sort of that little middle and core of the team, then we've got a chance. Just hang on in there. You've just got to stay next to them right until the end and then hope something crazy happens at the end, you know. that That's what we need to do. Um, Dynamite said, you must win the league, no excuses. I mean, listen, the reality is this. As much as I'm saying that Arteta has to win a major trophy this season, and, you know, I do stand by that in a sense. If Arsenal go and win 13 of their last 14 games, and we still don't win the league and Manchester City win it, I can't actually complain that much in terms of the Premier League because the argument will then be, we're just not as good as them. Do you know what I mean? And if that happens, that's different. My argument last season was Arsenal should have won the league in the position that we were in because we lost to Forest, we drew with Brentford, we lost um, you know, a two-goal lead against Liverpool, we drew with West Ham when we were winning, we, we lost the league there. So I think that's a different conversation. I've said it before and I've said it again. I think we've got a better chance of winning the Champions League than the Premier League, which sounds crazy when you've never won the Champions League. But I just think in a cup competition, every team in that competition looks beatable to me. Man City, of course, would be very difficult. But we have at least psychologically beaten them this season in the league. So uh, we are so much better this year, though. I mean... Are we so much better this year? That that's that's the question. I think defensively, yeah, we are a lot more solid. We got the best defense in the league. Um, I would say we're not as free flowing as last season. I think we were ripping teams apart on a regular basis. Um, but I think maybe we are that little bit more solid, and hopefully they learn a lot from last season. Uh, I agree, especially after watching this week. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I think we've kicked into gear now, but I think last season, over the course of the season, we were more free-flowing. But I hear you, Lawrence says defences win championships. You look at your Mourinho's and so on and so forth. They were definitely building the foundation in defence. Uh, Flea said, uh, I think the mentality is better. Well, it would have hurt them last season. It would, It should have hurt them massively, so hopefully they have learned. Take it easy on the Champions League, it's no joke. The thing with the Champions League is, and I know we talk about it and we joke about it, but heritage really can get the better of you in the Champions League, which is why I've said, Arsenal fans, do not be dismissive of that game against Porto because you're talking about a team with great history that have won that competition that will give us a difficult night, especially in the, in the game um, in Portugal. So 
Um, yeah, listen, everything's up for grabs. It's good that we're in the running, but can we get over the finish line is always my question. Uh, Pinnock, uh, Yardman is Brentford's best defender. Without him, they are dreadful. I think they're in a real relegation battle. Armino said, if we needed just 20% more from last year, then Rice and Timber would have contributed massively. But Havertz knocks 7 or 8% off. Possibly, because you could argue, as I said, that, that Granite was a better player than than what we're getting out of Havertz. Uh, William, uh, William, Wilfred Zaha is being uh, courted by a number of Premier League clubs. He wants to return to England. I'm not surprised there. Is it going to happen to Arsenal? Nah, nah, I'm joking. Too late. Should have bought him three years ago. Um, Sean says, come on, Burnley. They are due a big performance at home. Relax yourself, bro. Uh, South London's finest. Porto are not that team, especially now since they just sold their best striker to Inter. Problem is, bro, tell you the problem. Last year, we lost to a Sporting Lisbon team. Lisbon team. Lisbon? Sporting Lisbon team that I would have said, they're not that team either. And we got knocked out. A couple of years before, was it Olympiacos? So we have lost to teams in Europe that are not that team as well. You know, for some reason, in cup competitions, strange things have happened with Arsenal at times. So, uh, you know, I would say don't take it for granted. Uh, Tony didn't impress me today. Listen, I've watched the game today. Totally agree with you. Ivan Tony today has looked bang average. What I'm saying is don't write the guy off because he had an average performance against Liverpool who have smoked Brentford 4-1. And the reality is the guy scored again. And that's what we would be signing him for, his physical presence and his goal-scoring ability. We're not going to be playing like Brentford. Brentford are a poor team at the moment. Um, IGU Curtis from Kingston, Jamaica to win the title to lose no more matches for the rest of the season beat City and City sounds impossible that's the only way do you agree with that? the only way we win the league is if we beat Man City and, and maybe go unbeaten I don't know it's an interesting one it may require that City are, are a team that can win 20 games probably and Liverpool look, look ominous at the moment but the one bit of positive I take listen we beat Liverpool a couple of weeks ago you know, even last week against Burnley, I know they won 3-1. They were 2-1 up at one stage and quite unconvincing. So, we got to hang on in there. There's still some difficult games, you know, for, for both of them where I'm sure they'll drop points. Big up, Jay Dizzle. 18 months of sharing Arsenal games with the community. Thank you. See you, Nick. Come on, you Gunners. Uh, stand up if you hate. Okay, we'll stand up. You know what I mean? We're Nando's FC. We stand up for them. Big up Jay Dizzle. Big up David. He said, uh, exterminate Tommy's contract so he can miss more games for us. Oh, extend, exterminate. I'm going mad. It's crazy, isn't it? I, we, we started to praise him. And then all of a sudden, he turns back to the sick note again. I don't get it. Again, another player that was hardly ever injured. Big up Brian, Brooklyn in the building. Big up Curtis and crew, 4-0 to the Gunners. Our bench is not acceptable. Donkey to get on the score sheet. Will the donkey score today, people? And for those of you wondering who the donkey is, it's Havertz. If you're wondering why I call him donkey, he said it's his nickname. It's fact. His nickname is donkey. And uh, I think we've all kind of uh, seen why. Yeah, exterminate, exterminate. I don't know. It's been a long week, people. Um, interesting, though. Yeah, a couple of you saying there that I'm not going to say positive. I don't wish injury on anyone, of course. The negative for Liverpool that you, you know, you maybe will hope we can benefit from in some way. Uh, Diogo Jota and Curtis Jones both came off injured today for Liverpool. Um, but on the flip side of that, Mo Salah's back from AFCON. He gets one goal, one assist, um, despite the fact he only came on at, at half time, so or just before half time. So we know again, Salah's another one of them players. You know, you you find more often than not the teams that win the title, they have players that at the back end of the season they go right. It's crunch time. All eyes are on us. I'm going to show you why I'm better than most other players. We've seen it before. Thierry did it for Arsenal. Cristiano Ronaldo did it for Man United. We've seen it over the years. All of a sudden, Mo Salah's back. He's going to score goals. He, he's a game changer for Liverpool. Kevin De Bruyne's back and Haaland's back for Manchester City. They're going to kick into gear now. You can just see. We need one or two players at Arsenal, especially in the attack, that say, listen, I'm going to I'm gonna go and get 10 goals between now and the end of the season. 
Saka or a Trossard or a Martinelli. So that's what you need to happen at Arsenal. Um, but I'm looking forward to the game today. Hoping we get some goals, that's for sure. Big up Lee Burnell. Hope you're well, bro. He said, big up Big C, C Unit Business. Rude boy, bless. Big up yourself, bro. Hopefully we're three point collecting. Uh, Alfred, Curtis, I think, uh, I think one rule that needs to change is the goalkeeper being able to drag the ball from outside the box into the box and pick it up. Yeah, it's interesting that. I mean, they changed the rules, didn't they, uh, about 20 odd years ago with goalkeepers because they were allowed to pick the ball up from a pass back. They changed that to stop them from time wasting. Yeah, it could be one that, that needs to be looked at. Wham, well, I hope you're well, bro. The Premier League seems to roll in cycles. Big C, do you think City and Liverpool cycle is coming to an end? Klopp and Pep leaving Gunners on the rise. I mean, the first problem we got there, Wama, is um, I was reading the other day that Pep, they're talking about a contract extension. So it doesn't look like Pep's going anywhere. That The problem you've got with Pep is he has no reason to leave. They've got one of the best training grounds. They've got a brilliant stadium. They're building facilities around their stadium. His owners are some of the richest in the world. They've just won the treble. They've got arguably the best goal scorer on the planet. Where, where would Pep want to go? He doesn't want to go. You wouldn't want to go back to that Barcelona team at the moment. They're a mess. Doesn't seem to want to go into, into the international game. So until you get Pep out of this country, it's very difficult. I, you know, the 115 chargers... They'll get lawyers, solicitors, they'll push that back. That'll probably take two or three years. So it's difficult. Yeah, Klopp's going. That's one problem. But last year, Klopp and Liverpool weren't in the way and we couldn't win the league. So it's difficult. We need to have a real nine or ten out of ten transfer window. I know a lot of people this summer were like, oh, that's an eight out of ten. It wasn't an eight out of ten. It was probably a six and a, six and a half out of ten. We need an 8 or a 9 out of 10 transfer window to bridge that gap. You need to nail 4 or 5 transfers in the summer. That's the only way you're going to you're gonna get back with them. Cam, listen, I'm with you. And a lot of you have said it in the comments. Did you watch Ivan Tony today? Shocking performance. Listen, I've seen Gabriel Jesus play well and not score for Arsenal. And I've seen that performance multiple times, right? I've said, oh, Jesus played well today. No goal. Ivan Tony's played poor today against the team that's top of the Premier League for a Brentford team that absolutely stink at the moment. He's still leaving the pitch with a goal. I'd rather have my striker doing that than having great games playing at left back, defensive midfield and right wing and can't hit the back of the net. Ivan Tony's got four goals in five games. Gabriel Jesus got four goals in over half a season. So... I will, I, I've got no problem. I've got no problem with Ivan Tony having a bad game. He's still at the back of the net. Get Ivan Tony to the carpet, my friend. I'm not saying he's a world beater. I've said it all the time. But he's a goal scorer. I mean, look, um, MO7 says, fact, somebody said here, and I want to have this debate because I like, I like this. A lot of people were messaging saying, have you seen Tony today? He's been terrible. I said, oh, he scored though. He's a striker. Ain't that your number one priority? Prince said, Tony's not the answer, though, not for Arsenal anyway. Listen, fair enough. I'm all open, all ears. Who, who's your answer? Anybody who maybe thinks he's not the answer, because listen, I'd rather sign Kylian Mbappe. Of course I would. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking within the realms of what Arsenal can do. Who do you think we should get? Who do you think we should get? Some people say Sesko. He's had one good year in Germany. Bit early to hype him. Bony face, one good year in Germany. You've got a Pender I like, but... Only been around a little bit. Um, numbers are not super high. Lawrence said Tony is too slow. Sesco would buy, be my answer. Uh, fair enough. Marcus Turam, I mean, he's only just gone to Italy. I think you'd struggle to get him out. Um, listen, everyone in the world would want Mbappe. Of course we would. Get Harry Kane. Tony lacks the dribbling. He's not the quickest. Definitely not. But I think you can use him to link up with the wingers, use the pace of them. Listen, I, I'm I'm genuine. <laughs> Trossard said I'm the answer. I'm genuinely not like on some, oh, it's got to be Tony or no one else. There's other options, but I'm just saying. Jimenez, one year in, in Holland, I don't know. The other players have a lot of risk attached as well. Tony's a stretched out lacquer, says Ish. Um, 
Sesko is just a Slovenian. Brozhok, keep him away. Isak is the answer. Listen, I like Isak. I said it a number of times. And I judged him off um, the goal record in Spain, which wasn't very impressive. But the, the problem you got, number one, Isak's going to cost you big money. Number two, injury prone, bro. Injury prone. He gets injured, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, do you want to spend 70, 80, 90 million on a striker that's injury prone? I like Isak. I think he's a fantastic player. But I just don't know if we've already got, you know, we 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 got people queuing up to get in the door with the physio at Arsenal. They're that injury prone. I, I don't mind him having a bad game and scoring against Liverpool. Brentford absolutely stink at the moment. You've seen them. They are, they are horrendous. Um, they are now six points off the relegation zone. I, I think they're in a relegation battle, big time. You know, they look like the wheels have fell off. Um, somebody said, get Watkins. I mean, I, I like him, but I don't know what it is. I've just never been fully convinced by him. Maybe I need to change my mind. When I watch him, I, it just doesn't impress me. But listen, he is an Arsenal fan and he is having a good season. Vlajevic is the answer. Uh, listen, Vlajevic don't want nothing to do with the Prem. And people, you know, he, 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 uh, there's actually rumours he's going to sign a new contract. So, I don't know. I don't know. Whoever we get, as long as they're a goal scorer, the offer is a different dimension to what we've got at the moment. They can stay fit. Like you said, Kaya, striker market is as weak as it's been. Let's be real. Like, when you want a striker... And you're Arsenal, and you're in the Champions League, and you've got big money to spend, and you've got some pull. You should be talking about a absolute world beater, right? You should be talking about a world beater. I'm being totally honest here. Some people are saying you're Ivan Tony's loyal. No, I'm being totally honest. The last time we needed a striker before this period now, we signed a Bamiang when Alexis Sanchez left. When we signed Oba. I was mad, mad hyped. I knew he was... Well, you never know, but I, I genuinely believed Aubameyang was going to be a hit. The pace, the finishing ability. He'd done it in the Champions League. He'd done it in the Bundesliga. I was convinced he was going to be a success with Meza Ozil feeding him. Right? That's the level of striker we should be going for. You look at the market now. Sesco, Jimenez, Ivan Tony, Ollie Watkins. None of them guys are as good as the Aubameyang that we signed from Borussia Dortmund, like, what, five years ago, six years ago. We were signing a proven gunman striker, you know, who'd won the golden boot in the Bundesliga and bang goals in the Champions League. The striker market is horrific. It's horrific. We have to just understand what the market is. You ain't getting Mbappe. You ain't getting Haaland. A lot of the other top strikers are old now. If you're looking at, you know, your, your, your Suarez, your Cavani, all them guys are 30 plus. You've either got to take a risk on like a Sesco or a Boneface, who, somebody who's had a good year and you think, okay, he could be worth taking a chance. Like Armino said, listen, Osimen is probably the striker that is going to be available in the summer that's got the best CV that is potentially available. Right, if you break that record, pay the 110, awesome, and I think would leave Napoli and come to Arsenal. But, and I get what people are saying, Tony hasn't looked great, but he's still banging goals. But when you watch awesome, he doesn't look that great either. So you've probably got to sign a striker and go, do you know what? He's not incredible, but he hits the back of the net. Or you can get a more exciting striker that maybe doesn't hit the back of the net as much. To get the two to say he's exciting and good to watch and he gets numbers, you're going to struggle to get that at Arsenal. You really are. You know, we're, the market is just not that at the moment. Osimhen, Tony, Watkins, Sesco, Jimenez, they're all kind of risk attached to them. So... We're just going to have to see. We're going to have to see. But whoever we get, let's hope it's an upgrade. Our current strike has got four goals. And we're in the middle of February. So let's be real. As much as I respect what Gabriel Jesus does around the penalty area, um, he's not exactly prolific. He hasn't set a standard that's going to be extremely difficult to, to get close to. Do you know what I mean? In terms of numbers. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um... 
Big up William, who's a new member on the channel. Really appreciate that. Member stream next week. Wham, I said, uh, Zerk, uh, Zerk, what's his name again? Xerxy being compared to Burkamp. I mean, listen, don't, re don't read the papers. You know, they're comparing this guy to Burkamp. Just, just rip that newspaper up. Um, Juice Saw said, fix the midfield in the summer. Keep Trossard as striker. The thing is, I, I really like how Trossard is playing as a striker. I think over the course of a whole season, you're just going to have them days where Man City away, you don't have a lot of the ball, that one chance falls to you, you want it to be an out-and-out -out striker um, rather than, you know, a false nine. As I said, Liverpool won the title, false nine for me, no, but they had two prolific wingers in Mane and Salah. City did it one season, false nine, but they had goals from all over the place, so... I think you've got to sign a striker, even if Trossard battles to play up front. I still think you've got to have that option and that physicality in the front line. But it's a listen, it's a great debate to have. I enjoy talking about it. Um, Vegas going to big up Curtis. I have a feeling if Kelleher goes on the market, we'll get short change for Ramsdale. That Kelleher looks good, to be honest. He looks like he could start at um, some clubs in the Prem. Great backup keeper for Liverpool. Ramsdale, if you're going to sell him, sell him early in the summer before other keepers become available. I think at best we get our money back for Ramsdale, 30, 35 million. We're not great at selling. You know, there should be profit there. He's an England international, but we won't. Uh, Richard said, I get so confused when you say bony face. I keep thinking you were talking about Jesus. Hey, the cheekbone Jesus, yeah? Sniper said, uh, Curtis, did you see that RB Leipzig forward versus Man City? Was that, is that a pender, is it? I'm assuming that's who played up front. I actually didn't watch, um, I didn't watch all of that game. I was watching the Real Madrid game. I'm assuming that it was a pender, who's obviously very highly rated, but um, he hasn't been there long. How much would he cost? His goal record, uh, let's have a look, Lewis Appender. Pender, Belgian international, 24 years of age, being linked with Liverpool at the moment. There's a story there. Link. Wow, he's having a good season. Four goals in seven Champions League games, 15 goals in 21 games um, in the league. Last year, he got 21 in the French league, 19 the year before. He's, he's, you know, he's, got, so, he's got a little bit of pedigree, 24 years of age. I've watched him a bit. Um, yeah, he's, he has got a little bit of pedigree there, but they've only just signed him, so I'm not sure. Um, Big C, Tony is the striker's my first choice. He knows the league. Always helps. Well, most of the time, unless you sign Francis Jeffers. Don't matter how much he knew the league. He was shocking. Uh, Sam says, big up Big C and the Gooners in the community. Alexander Jesus set, not scoring goals plus injuries. He has to go. That said... We should be set for a goal fest today. Do you know what? Uh, great conversation. Really appreciate it. Latoura Martinez as well. Bangs goals in Italy. Looked horrible in the World Cup. Um, but yeah, it, listen, there's no... I think what we can all agree on, in my opinion, there is no striker out there that you're going to be totally convinced all around with. You know, I've said many times, sign Ivan Tony. I've still got doubts around him. You know, uh, Osserman. People say get Osserman. Got a good goal record, but I've got doubts over him. I think you, whoever we go for this summer, there's going to be questions and there's going to be positives around them. But I think what we all agree on, we need a goal scorer and we need somebody who offers something different to Jesus. Jesus, for me, is... Arsenal are going to have too much work to do in this transfer window to start thinking about shifting Gabriel Jesus, in my opinion, because... I think I think there'll be a number of players who will leave this summer. Um, La Conga, Tavares, El Nenny, maybe Jorginho, Ramsdale and Ketia, um, possibly Smith Rowe, possibly Fabio Vieira. I think there's a number of players who will leave. So I, I, I don't think Jesus will go this summer. I think next summer, Jesus could be on the chopping block if he gets injured. Again, because, listen, Jesus, to me, I'm sitting here now after 18 months, and in harsh reality, as much as I like him as a football player, it hasn't been a big hit. That has not been a big hit, that transfer. 45 million, 
you know, Champions League experience, World Cup um, player for, for Brazil, won multiple titles at Man City. You're now looking at it going 11 Premier League goals last season, injured for over three months last season. He's had three injuries this season, two knee injuries and a pulled hamstring. And we're in February with four goals under his belt. You know, if I'm being very harsh... Jesus at this moment in time has not been a great signing for Arsenal, no matter how much we like the all-round game. Yeah, and you're right. You know, as much, you know, Richarlison was starting up front ahead of him for Brazil. Not even an out-and-out -out striker. So, yeah, if he becomes the backup striker and we use him in rotation with Saka, I think that's a you know that's where I look at him as a very good player. If he's part of your attacking you know squad, I think that's decent. If he's your starting striker and you're looking at him to lead you to a title, I think yeah, I think you're struggling. Um, Richard said, I think Haaland is the only truly world-class striker. I think Haaland, I think Harry Kane, probably. Um, Lewandowski, but he gets injured a lot now. The other big strikers, most of them are old now. Killing Mbappe, but Mbappe plays on the left wing most of the time. So you'd be you'd be lucky to name five world class strikers in the world, to be honest. They're, you know, Benzie's in Saudi now. So anyway, listen, let's look ahead. Let's focus on uh, today's game. Uh, Burnley, Burnley against Arsenal should be a smoke fest. However, I'm not going to go over the top. People asking for the score prediction. Um, I would love to sit here and say I think we're going to go 5 or 6 nil again like last week. And uh, I've watched Burnley a few times this season and, you know, he, he's not compromising his style. He's playing the same way. And if he plays like that against us, he's going to get battered. However, surely Vincent Company is not that stupid to try and play tiki-taka at home. Um, I think I'm going to go... Uh, Yesterday, what was I saying yesterday? Was it 2-0? I'm going to go 3-0. I'm going to go 3-0. I hope I'm wrong. I would like it to be more, of course. But I just kind of feel like they'll try and make it a little bit more difficult away from home. We haven't got a lot on the bench. If we can score early, if we're 1-0 or 2-0 up after 15-20 minutes, I may change that to 4 or 5-0. But I'm going to go 3-0 because I just think company against um, against Arteta, being that he worked with Arteta at Man City, I think he will try and play a little bit more subdued than normal. If he tries to play, you know, this tiki-taka, they will get absolutely annihilated. What I want to see is a clean sheet. And, and a comfortable victory. Goal difference could be very important. Listen, 3,250 of you in the chat. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get them numbers up. Uh, Evan said, uh, well, Curtis, score predictions today. Yeah, I'm going for 3-0, um, which may seem a little... I think some of you would have expected me to say more than that. Um, it's just when you've destroyed a team the week before, I just think Burnley will be a little bit more defensive than normal. Uh, Wama said, if you are not totally convinced on strikers, what young player would you gamble on? I mean, I mean, the, 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 the gamble for Arsenal could have been Balogun, to be honest. The other thing could be, do you buy an expensive winger that scores a lot of goals? Difficult because you've got Martinelli, you've got Saka, do you want to spend big there? But could you go and buy a winger, maybe a left winger more or a right winger? Could you go and sign a winger that scores a lot of goals and have an attacking unit rather than an out-and-out -out striker? Could you go and sign Rafael Liao or, I don't know, a winger that gets 15 to 20 goals and do it that way? There, there's other ways um, of doing it. Uh, tap the brakes on the Tony hate. He's been out for six months. Exactly. I think that people are being a bit harsh. And listen, I watched the game. He didn't play great today. We scored against Liverpool. He scored four in five. Jesus got four in six months. So I know what I'd rather have up front. Uh, Rowan said, 4-1 Arsenal. Come on, you gunners. Let's score some good goals. Uh, in Jesus' name, Jar, we pray amen. Uh, yay, come on, man. We need that. We need that um, guidance. Listen, before the game starts, game starts in uh, nine minutes' time. Um, as you know, it's VPN settings today. In the UK, uh, 3 p.m. kickoff. So um, I'm going to try. I mean, I've got a stream lined up there, but I'm hoping there isn't much of a delay. If any of you guys have got any links to it, 
I've seen a few people asking for links in the chat. Throw them in the chat, share them around. Um, if you know what channel is the best channel really to try and watch it on, or you've got any links for people online, because uh, yeah, still got this ridiculous blackout system that they have in the UK for 3 p.m. kickoffs that is the most pathetic thing that I have ever seen, but they get away with it. Alfred said, speaking of Balogun, how is he doing? Do you know what? Let's have a look. I haven't looked at all. I don't think I think I've watched him play once at the start of the season. I've hardly watched him since. Yeah, four goals and three assists in 12 starts, one in three, seven goal contributions. I mean, it's okay. It's it's nothing special, but uh, we'll see. We'll see really how he gets on. I'm not sure how Monaco are doing in the French League. Let's have a look how they're doing. Ligue 1, table, Monaco. Oh, Monaco are third, actually. They're only a point off second, and they've got a game in hand. So they're having a good season. So... But yeah, four goals, three assists for for Balogun. Uh, yeah, big up to everyone putting the 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 links in. Yeah, I know it's USA Network in the US. So yeah, big up. Throw that. Throw them links in there, and uh, we'll try and get that. We'll try and get it sorted. I saw a funny stat about Saka. Saka, two hundred and ten games, scored fifty one goals. CR seven, two hundred. Ah, oh, listen, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. Do you remember that season when we had? Um, I think it was the first season that Mustafi had signed. And Mustafi had a better... His, he'd won more challengers than Van Dijk in the Premier League. And people were putting up pictures of Van Dijk and uh, Mustafi. And I said, bro, don't do that to yourself. Like, you are jumping the gun. You can look at stats that will make an average player look like a world beater you and that is not the stat that you should be looking at and then we all know how that worked out so yeah people saying oh Saka's got more goals than Ronaldo in his first 200 and something game like Ronaldo had to adjust to the Premier League he came from another country it's an irrelevant stat but yeah the statos online they love it they love it um people watching football through stats is crazy you know what I mean as if we can compare um Cristiano Ronaldo to um to Bakayo Saka even though I do believe he's having a great season of course um right let's get this game lined up I don't know how far behind I am going to be here but hopefully uh, I know it's on USA Network so we'll work with that and see how we get on um you're world class at being shameless I'll take it I'll take it people you know me uh, I'm shameless with it so uh, we embrace the shamelessness on this channel. Taz said, I'd be happy with 1-0. Um, I get you, a win is a win, but, you know, I think goal difference could be significant, so I'm going 3-0. Can the donkey get a goal today? It's a great game for you to get a goal. We're going to dominate the ball and hopefully have lots of chances. So, I mean, if he can't score today, when is he going to score? Yeah, uh, people still asking for links in the chat. I've seen a few of you put them in the chat, so big up yourselves. Um, I'm just making sure I'm sorted here. Big up Christian, who's gifted a Curtis Shaw TV membership. Really appreciate that. Um, the players are in the tunnel. The players are in the tunnel, people. We're about to get the players on the pitch and uh, hopefully three-point collecting. I've gone for 3-0. To the Arsenal. Um, there's a few games in the Premier League today, so feel free to throw the score updates in the chat as and when they happen. And uh, let's hope it's a comfortable victory for Arsenal here, people. Um, Arsenal against Burnley. You've got Forest against West Ham. Yeah, here we go. Going on the pitch now. I've got a link here. I just don't know how far behind the live game this is. I suppose I'll find out once the game kicks off, but... Uh, we are there. And, uh, yeah, uh, Trossard man of the match, I hope so. Listen, I want it to be an attacking player. If it's an attacking player, it means that um, we've done well going forward. You know what? I'm going to speak it into existence. Havertz scores a goal today. There you go. I'm saying it. The donkey will score today. Um... Because to be honest, he's due a goal. He is due a goal, to be honest. So, And I think we will score a few goals there. Yeah, that's probably why he does that celebration, right? I would assume. Um, 
So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go I'll go for the donkey to score. Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna try and get two streams up just so we're kind of um, up to date with everything that's happening in case one of them lags behind a little bit. Uh, let's do that. One. Right, so we've got two streams going. Jeff Stelling settings here, people. So um, hopefully we'll be bang up today. Kai Man of the Match performance, Hopium. Why not Hopium settings, people? Uh, Christian, yeah, I read that one out. Make sure you hit the like button. Great numbers in here. Uh, 15 to 20 seconds. Well, I'm hoping this one here. I've got two of them running. So hopefully one of them will be bang up to date. That's what I'm hoping for. So I should be all right. Should be all right. Um, players are on the pitch. We're about to kick off in two minutes. 9-0. Can we break the record? Can we break the record, people? Um, I don't think anyone's ever scored 10 in the Premier League. If we score early, I think we can smash them all over the place. I think we could. But I'm going for 3-0 just purely because I think as a manager, if you're if you're... Vincent Company today, you'd be absolutely crazy to turn up here today and, you know, try and attack and get at us. It doesn't make any sense, you know. So I, I do think there will be a little bit of a improvement in Burnley defensively. And I did watch them last week at Anfield and I saw a lot of people last week saying they're going to lose 7 8 nil at Anfield and they put in a fairly good account of themselves. So... I'm just. I just think they will be a little bit more solid defensively than maybe we're expecting. But I hope I'm totally wrong. I hope they stink out the place and we beat them nine nil. Um, listen, as I said, goal difference now. Liverpool have now gone. They're now four goals ahead of us. Liverpool on goal difference. So if we can score four today, we'd be level with Liverpool on goal difference. A win would put us two points behind them. Um, so yeah, we definitely need to score some goals today, that's for sure. And the players are about to kick off. Um, we're about to get underway, people. So let's hope for a few goals. Score predictions are in. Like I said, anybody's got any links, throw them in the chat. People are um, still looking for links. Uh, Burnley are about to get us underway. I tell you what, I've been to this stadium before. And it is not very nice. Like, I mean, we are underway. There we go. We're underway, people. We are underway. Burnley against Arsenal. And we're hoping for goals. And we're hoping for lots of them. We are underway. It's going to be light work. Listen, it's the Premier League, mate. You can never, you can never, you know, never assume. Never assume, people. Anytime it can go wrong. Uh, it's live on X. Uh, there you go. Hopefully there's a link. I hope there's links all over the place for people to tune in. I've got two games, two screens showing the game. One of them has kicked off. The other one is only just kicking off. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, apparently I'm 30 seconds behind, but we'll make it work, people. We will make it work. We're underway. Arsenal against Burnley. This has got to be light work. This has got to be light work for us today. We're playing in the yellow kit. And um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know much about this Burnley team. James Trafford, who obviously was the England under-21 goalkeeper. You've got, I think that's Sander Burge who used to play for Sheffield United. I, I, I'm usually quite knowledgeable of the opposition, but these are just a bunch of players that I usually discard on uh, on FIFA when I pack them, you know. So, yeah, I genuinely don't know much about this um about this um, this Burnley team. And you're right, yeah, I am about 30 seconds behind because I've just refreshed. And um, now I can see that that one's on two minutes and I'm on one minute and 40 something. So I'm going to try and refresh that. Hopefully I'll change the timer at half time. Um, Arsenal on the attack early on. Kai Havertz, I said, I think he's going to score today. Um, let's hope he proves us right and bangs in a goal. Uh, companies in the stands. I didn't even realise that. Is it must? I think is it free yellow cards now? You get banned, one match ban. Odegaard got a. Uh, is that Odegaard? Trossard. Trossard was fouled early on there. 
Early goal to settle the nerves would be good. AFTV are watching Declan Rice's goal against West Ham. Don't worry, they'll get there in the end. Big up Robbie and the guys. Neon Green. You know what? I'd be interested. How many of you have got that away kit? How many of you? When, I, when that kit came out, I said, this kit will divide opinion. But it will be popular, you know, because people like different kits. A lot of kits now are boring. I actually have no problem with Arsenal bringing out one wild kit. I think your home kit and your away kit should be the the traditional colours that you wear. And then I think the third kit should be something crazy. There is a few, plenty of you have got it. I'm sure, you know, summertime on holiday or, you know, I'm sure many of you got that kit. I know when I went to the armoury, one of the guys who I know who works there, he said, listen, that kit's flown off the shelf. So it just shows, don't it, how... Um, how crazy some of these um, kits can be, and they're massively popular. I remember that Man United Zebra one was one of their biggest selling uh, away kits. Uh, I got the away kit accidentally. I wanted the green one. I got them both. Oh, oh, it was an accident, was it? We've all been there. We've all been there. Sky Sports playing the game in New Zealand. Keith said his two-year-old son has it. And here we go. Arsenal have scored. We've taken the lead already, people. 1-0 to Arsenal after just four minutes. Martin Odegaard, the captain, has given Arsenal the lead. Odegaard, after just four minutes, delayed settings, but we're there. Martin Odegaard, the captain, has given Arsenal the lead. Light work. I'm changing my predictions now, people. I'm looking for a 6 or 7 nil to Arsenal. Martin Odegaard has given Arsenal the lead inside four minutes. The captain, yeah, camera celebration, which is fair. I respect it. The captain with the goal after just four minutes. What a start that is for Arsenal. Absolutely brilliant. Gibraltar guard with the goal. Let me watch it on the big screen because this small screen got me squinty-eyed. It is early, but listen, a goal that quick. I mean, That's a good finish, by the way. That is a quality finish. I told you this guy's got to shoot more. He has to shoot more. Martinelli, I think that was with the assist. Just seeing the replay. These balloons on the pitch and all sorts. I mean, I tell you what, what a goal that is, by the way. Oh, my God, what a finish. Great pass by Martinelli. The first touch. I've been saying for weeks this guy doesn't shoot enough. Look what he's capable of. Absolutely brilliant goal, that. Controls it on the edge of the box. Smashes it into the bottom corner. What a goal. That is an outstanding goal. Drills it into the bottom corner. Keeper's got absolutely no chance. But excellent play there by Martinelli. You know, I like the fact there he just took him to the byline. I mean, that's a great goal. That's one of them goals that gets better every time you watch it. Martinelli finally... Lifting his head up. Oh, Odegaard, the technique is a joke. It's kind of that Thiago technique at Liverpool, the half volley where he drills it about half a yard off the floor. It's an absolutely outstanding finish. Brilliant, brilliant goal by Martin Odegaard. I said it before, the guy needs to shoot more. Does not shoot enough. It's a great goal. Martinelli with the assist and... Uh, Arsenal in front, great start to the game. Listen, I said before, you could see from last season that um, Martinelli has a great... Um, sorry, Odegaard has a great shot on him. But he doesn't shoot enough. That's the problem. How many times do you watch Arsenal and see Martinelli on the edge of the box um, pulling it back to Odegaard? And Odegaard, you know, he's still trying to play one-twos. He doesn't want to shoot. Finally, he shoots, gets the goal. Brilliant goal. Outstanding. Outstanding from him. So, great, great start. I am changing my uh, predictions ever so slightly now. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a 6 or 7 nil drilling now, to be honest. Odegaard's been cooking this month. He has. He has. Um, I'm watching it on that USA Network channel through the VPN, but I think I've, I think I've got maybe a 20, 30 second delay. Saka's down on the floor. Hopefully this is nothing serious. And Martinelli's hurt as well. They took a oh, they took a little whack there. Uh, hopefully he's all right. Yeah, five minimum. 
Forget my 3-0 prediction. Throw that out the window. 6-7-0. 6-7-0. Um, and Great start. Couldn't have wished for a better start, people. Could not have wished for a better start. 1-0 to the Arsenal inside four minutes. Uh, Fubo Sports or Optus, apparently they're channels that you can watch the game as well. I know some of you are, are struggling for, for links here. Uh, the good news I can say is that uh, I, think, I think it's the next five or six games for Arsenal are on regular TV. So... Um, you know, there, there should be no problem in in watching the remaining uh, games before the international break. Um, Martinelli with a, a fantastic outside the foot cross. Yeah, exactly. You know, all he's got to do is be direct, lift his head up, pick people out. You can't always run past someone. That's all I ever say about Martinelli. Lift your head up. He did there. And we reap the rewards. Burnley, when they go a goal down, they tend to get hammered. So let's hope... Um, we can we can hammer them. John said, thanks, Curtis. I don't know why they don't show games in the UK. I don't know why um, fans in this country are not protesting for that. Because we've seen you protest and, and you take action, you can get results. How how are we still watching 3pm kickoffs, you know, through VPNs in this country? How are we not watching them on TV yet? I can go out of England and watch them. It's crazy. Craig Bellamy is actually the manager today while um, Vincent Company is a band sitting in the stands. I remember Bellamy for um, beating up John Arnie Risa and then doing the golf celebration. Old school Premier League years, then man there. I remember um, Rio Ferdinand trying to scoop the ball over his head and then getting outpaced. Um... Chris said, it's a joke. Arsenal tickets get snapped up. I just want to watch my team. Very hard to get tickets this season. It really is. Could you lead the way with a campaign? Televise the 3 p.m. kickoffs. I'll lead the way, people. I'll lead the way. Get us our 3 p.m.s. We need them. We need our 3 p.m.s on TV. Um, they have this mentality that the stadium's going to be empty if the, if the 3 p.m.s are on telly. Dre said Bellamy was rapid. He had mad pace, man. Mad pace. Burnley in possession. Aaron Ramsey. I actually thought they'd signed Aaron Ramsey, who played for Arsenal when I saw that. It's a young player. I think it was. Uh, I think he was at Villa with Jacob Ramsey. I don't know if they're related. Uh, we need to win every single match, says Tribute. Uh, Abdullah said, uh, "Big up, Big C. Just tuned in. Hope you and your family are well. I'm good, bro. We're good. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. Hope the community is well." Three and a half K in the chat. Great support. Uh, um, LSU, it's a lagging battle today. Still trying to get you matched to my street. I know, bro. It's one of them days, I'm afraid, as Sizzler Kalanji once said. Um, Burnley in possession. I'm thinking now, by half time, you need to be seeing two or three, really. Uh, you know, I'm expecting at least two. Oh, they are brothers, right? Jacob and Aaron Ramsey. I'm, I'm hoping... We're two or three nil up by half time, which I think would be game over, to be honest. Um, and then obviously we 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 can try and get the goals. Also, you got to think, people. We got a very big game midweek. I, I would like us to be in a position where we can take players off, you know, in the second half and and rest four or five players. <laughs> if you don't read this comment, you love Spurs. It's a good way. Yeah, I can't really ignore that, can I, Joyce? Uh, Vic says, come on, you gunners from Mexico City. Here's Saliba on the ball. Finds Gabriel Magalhaes. The brick wall settings at the back. Are we missing Zinchenko, says Sashin? Um, I think in these games, probably not. Um, because we're dominating possession anyway. But, it, listen, he helps. Because what he does do, he, he can pick that pass. There's a lot of creativity there. So, defensively, we're not being challenged, though. So... It's not a big deal, really, but yeah, I suppose on the ball he offers you a little bit more creativity, of course, than Kivio. Osimhen or Ivan Tony? It's a great question. I'm going to stick with my answer, and I'm I'm going to say Ivan Tony because I'm not convinced by Osimhen at 110 million pound. But I'd take either one of them shamelessly, and I'd take anyone else who who can improve us. Big up SC Guna, thank you very much, bro. He's gifted five Curtis Shaw TV memberships. Trossard there was in. Oh my God, Trossard, how have you missed that? I actually thought he was offside. 
Trossard there was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper from a tight angle. I didn't actually react to it because I thought he was about three yards offside. He could have actually rolled the ball across for a tapping. Tries to take it round James Trafford. Trafford gets his arm on it and blocks it. I'm going to be honest, that's poor from Trossard. Oh, he was offside. Oh, I'm just seeing the replay now. I mean, I love the confidence that he tried to just roll it round the goalkeeper. There's a tapping at the back post for Martinelli. He's lucky he's offside. I'm glad he's offside because if he wasn't, I might have been going a little bit crazy. The offside saves him a little bit, I suppose. Um, listen, what I will say is confidence is high. I respect the confidence that he's trying to roll the ball around the keeper. You only do that when you're in confident mood. However, you know, if he was onside, I'd be having a very different conversation. Um, feels like he knew he was offside. Mate, sometimes you know, and with VAR, you're not going to get away with it anyway. Franklin said moving like he was drunk. Yeah, I, I just noticed there, Osman, uh, you know, it looked like a clear pass, but on the replay, the defender's kind of in the in the way, so maybe he would have blocked it. Maybe he would have blocked it, so, uh, you know, no, no harm done. He says, chill, it happens, bro. He's got his phone in his sock. He's talking to us from the game. Uh, big up to everyone locked in. Hope you're well. We're nice and relaxed. Arsenal are on the attack here. Gabriel Martinelli left-hand side. Gets to the byline. Can we get a second goal? Martinelli got the assist for the first goal, which was scored by um, by Martin Odegaard. Can we get a second? It's cleared. We have to restart there with Declan Rice. I would like to see a few players get on the score sheet here. I really would. Martinelli's having a good game today. Looks lively. I think he knows he's got this right back in his pocket. You just know as a player sometimes when you, you've got you've got the fullback or whatever. And I think Martinelli knows he's got the better of this guy today. Um, he looks dangerous, and he's um, he's got a bit more end product there. I mean, look how easy he got past him. The centre back has to come over. Odegaard got the goal off cut. Odegaard, fantastic finish. Controls edge of the box, drills it into the bottom corner. Good assist by Martinelli. Um, I think the thing is now, without sounding greedy, I'm, I'm looking for Arsenal to be at least two goals up at half-time. 1-0 would be disappointing in a way because it still means that Burnley have a contest. You want Burnley to be going in at half-time with the game done and dusted, you know. that That's what I'm hoping for. Um... It is the Chelsea for Fafana. Yeah, it is. Is it David Fafana or something? Yeah, Chelsea loaned him out somewhere and um, he was recalled from the loan. What on earth? Oh, he's offside. Um, yeah, he was recalled from the loan and uh, Vincent Company's got him in on loan. So, yeah, he's meant to be quite highly rated, but doesn't look great in a Burnley team, of course. Kamani said, we need to be greedy. You're right. Winning the game... Because this is how you've got to look at it always. If Manchester City were 1-0 up after four minutes away at Burnley, what would you expect that game to finish? If you was checking it on your phone and you went, oh God, Man City are winning 1-0 after four minutes. You'd be scared to look at your screen because you're thinking, I'll check that again in an hour and it'll be 6-0, 7-0. Haaland will have scored about five. Oh, his name's Datro for fun. But... Um, we need to be that same ruthless team. We've been it the last few weeks. We need to continue today. Um, and I hope that we can. Havertz with the timber and boot touch. Here's Trossard. I'm very surprised we haven't scored again already, to be honest, if I'm being a little bit um, greedy here when it comes to the situation. I don't know what Havertz was trying to do there. Was he trying to Cruyff turn? Should have done better. Edge of the penalty area. Had a heavy touch ball runs away from it. Um, 17 minutes gone. Arsenal 1, Burnley 0. Odegaard with the goal. Can we get the second? Can we build on it? Um, it would be nice if we could score 5 or 6 today. Um, Burnley have got the second worst defence in the league. So there ain't really an excuse for the level of quality that we're up against today. It's not exactly anything to write home about. Um... We're keeping possession quite well. We just haven't really created a great chance yet to get another goal. I'm just trying to refresh this link on the big screen. 
Try and get this one a bit more up to date. Still 1-0. Havertz in possession. Trossard did have a one-on-one, -on -one, but he was offside. Uh, one love to the Gunners, says Philip. Big up yourself, bro. Yeah, Havertz maybe could have done better with that chance. Do you think Saliba is the best centre-back in the league? I would probably... I would probably still say it's Virgil van Dijk. And I know he made a big mistake against Arsenal the other week. But I look at his pedigree, his leadership, his long passing. I, 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 st I think he's been the best centre-back in the Prem for a number of years. Maybe, I, I would say he's up there. But I still think van Dijk's got a lot of credit in the bank. You know, he's done it in the Champions League. He's won the Champions League. He's won the Prem. He's won their Cups. I would still say Virgil. Um, I'd say he's maybe top three, top three maybe, maybe Van Dyke, Diaz, Saliba, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, Pro said he isn't even Arsenal's best centre-back this season. There is an argument, I think, this season that Gabriel's been at least as good as him and he's scoring goals as well. Uh, AJ said, Curtis, I'm not expecting a huge scoreline like the West Ham game. I think we need to conserve ourselves. Well, like, as I said, AJ, I went for 3-0 to Arsenal at the start of the game because I, I just don't think, I don't think you back up a 6-0 with another 6-0. I think Burnley will be much more defensive. Um, oh my God, Havertz, bad header, great ball from Ben White. I mean, maybe he could have brought that down. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh on him. Arsenal on the attack again. Let's get this second goal. I would not be happy if Burnley go in 1-0 down. Uh, by the way, that was a fantastic ball from Ben White, who I think quietly, Ben White, over the last four weeks, has got back into um, has got back into his zone, you know. So I'm, I've been very impressed with Ben White defensively and going forward over the last few weeks. He's been much better. Uh, could he have chested that? I wasn't sure if I was being harsh on him, but I thought maybe he could have jumped up and tried to bring it down. I don't know. I don't know. Um, here's Gabriel Magalhaes. Magalhaes. Uh, no, I did read that one, didn't I? SC Gunnar. Oh, said a big 5-0 victory. Listen, we'd all love that. We'd all love that. Let's get the likes up, people. Let's get the likes up. Big up to all of you locked in. I haven't checked the likes. Let's see where you're at. We must be on at least a thousand, a thousand five hundred. Otherwise, it's an absolute disgrace and a cheat. And I hope Burnley get relegated, as Ty would probably say. People, uh, we got three and a half k in the chat. We've we're not even at a thousand likes. It's an absolute disgrace, guys. It's a disgrace. Nine hundred likes. Come on, let's hit a thousand. We're looking for three thousand by the end of the stream. Here come Arsenal. Saka, one two with Ben White, right hand side. Come on. Burnley are just putting players behind the ball. I did say they are not going to play that expansive football today. They gained nothing from getting hammered today. Um, so, Disgracia, guys. Disgracia. Uh, afternoon, Curtis. My internet disappeared as soon as the goal was about to go. And I'm here for some information and entertainment. Let's go. Odegaard on the ball. Can we get a few more goals? Corner to Arsenal. Corner to the Gunners. We're actually the... I think we're the... Aren't we the highest set-piece scoring team, I believe, in the Premier League? So, can we get another goal from one of the two centre-backs? Ben White, as I said, he's playing well. He looks really good. I think over the last month, you've seen the Ben White of last season, um, which is great. We need him back. We need a few more players back. Uh, say what you want about the donkeys, really good in in winning aerial duels. I mean, yeah, I mean that's great, and I respect it. But sixty five million pounds, you want more than that. That's the problem. That is the problem. You know, you 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 expect a little bit more than the odd header. Uh, corner whipped in. It's cleared. Burnley are safe. Uh, one like for every time Saka boots the ball. At the fullback, I think he was put in there. Corners come to nothing. Do you think Mbappe will go to Arsenal? We're more likely to sign Mbappe's brother than Kylian Mbappe. Um, we ain't signing Kylian. I wish we was, but we're not. Uh, the donkey is no good. Stop fooling yourself. It's another corner to Arsenal. Saka. Can we get the second goal? We need it. 
just to kill this game off. Don't make it a contest. Don't give Burnley any hope. 1-0 always gives them a bit of hope. They can get back into the game. There's a bit of pushing and shoving in the area. Um, Ethan wouldn't come to Arsenal. Well, apparently Aston Villa have scored. Thank you for the updates. Keep us, uh, keep us updated in the comments. Um, here's Odegaard for Arsenal. Can we get the second? Yeah, Saka seems to do the in-swingers from that side. And then maybe it's Rice from the other side. Villa of Scott. I don't even know who Villa. Who are Villa playing? I haven't even seen who they're playing today. Um, Arsenal still on the attack. Saka, right-hand side. Come on. We need another goal here. Let's make it 2-0 and finish it off. Havertz is useless. Big up Adam said, yes, watch it from Knott's Ball World. Love your lives, bro. Big up Adam, Knott's crew. For, oh, Fulham. Fulham v Villa. Ball's cleared. Arsenal have the ball back with Saliba. Kivior in possession. I mean, look, Burnley don't have a lot going forward, but, you know, at 1-0, it's always nerve-wracking. I don't want Arsenal to... Give them a chance. Only takes a set piece or something stupid and they're back in the game. So we need the second goal. Trafford's got possession for for um, for Burnley. 1-0 is a bit nerve-wracking. Yeah, Villa lead 1-0. I'm just checking now. Who got the goal? Ollie Watkins. A lot of you before the game were, were giving it the Ollie Watkins shout. So fair play to you. I think that's 11 goals, 10 assists for him this season. They're having a very good season. It's a slow game. It's a boring game. And you know what? Burnley will want to make this a boring game because 1-0 at half-time is a great result for Burnley because they're still in it. You know, it's still game on. I want Arsenal to finish this game off in the first half, which you're going to need to score two or three goals to do that. So I want to see a bit more from us. Kevin said he needs a ticket for Arsenal-Newcastle. Breezy said uh, Watkins is class. It is a boring game at the moment. It is. Ivan Tony to Arsenal. If they want him, they'll get him, in my opinion. But it's if they do want him. I, you know, a lot of the links are coming from the press. There ain't much directly coming from Arsenal. That's the only thing I've ever said with Ivan Tony. Here come Burnley on the attack. O Odebeer, is that? Odebeer? Am I saying this guy's name right? Uh... Don't do anything stupid here, please, because this is the Premier League. Anything's possible. Burnley again, left-hand side, Del, Del Croy, is it? I, I don't even know who these guys are. Bear with me if I'm butchering names here. When Burnley attack, I get nervous. Ah, see, that's dangerous, man. Ben White was getting dealt with there. I just said how good Ben White's been. He was getting cooked then. What the hell's going on? Look how easy that is. Just said how good he's doing. He's getting skipped. They're on the attack again here, Burnley. I don't like this. That guy looks lively on the left-hand side. Arsenal have the ball back. Messi or Ronaldo? Bro, I think that debate's um, well and truly ended. I don't think that even happened. It's Messi all day long. He spotted Lee and Julian in the crowd. Big up. It's Arsenal sign and Mbappe, Arteta, Martinelli and Saka leave and Brendan Rodgers becomes the new manager. Oh, after yesterday, I, for anyone who didn't tune in yesterday, there was a question that set off the whole chat. Somebody said, would I swap Saka and Martinelli for Mbappe? I said, yes, I'm ruthless. Yeah, and obviously we had a good debate. We put a poll up, but it caused a real stir in the chat. Um, that's a bit much, that one. Brendan Rodgers with uh, Mbappe, probably have him at left back. But yeah, I would take it. <laughs> um, uh, why is it either that when Real Madrid want a player, nobody else is able to compete? It's the heritage, bro. They've won the most Champions Leagues. They're probably the biggest club in the world, most successful. The kit is famous. The King of Spain has links to the club. It's Madrid, man. It's Hala Madrid. When they come knocking, you have to move out of the way. You said yes. <laughs> I'm doing it for content purposes, my friend. Yeah, you you don't say you don't say no to Madrid, do you? That's the problem. It's very difficult. 
I mean, that was a good save by Ray, you know, because he looks like he's gambling on him crossing it. And he smashes it at the near post. It's sloppy defending. I don't like that. I don't like that. It's too easy. <clears throat> Odegaard in possession for Arsenal. Come on. We need more. They're owned by the banks of Spain, Real Madrid, apparently. The money, the fame, the lifelong uh, fame of your success. Hey, you're gonna, how many trophies are you going to win? It's guaranteed trophies. Here's Trossard for Arsenal. Come on. We need a second goal here. Finish this game off. Yasin, you better relax with that question. That set the, the, the chat on fire last time. Atleti sponsors my local club, says Tim. Arsenal lose possession. Brownhill has the ball back. Burnley in possession. It's a real... i got to be honest. It's, um, it's not a great game. It is not a great game. Arsenal lead 1-0. Odegaard with the goal. Was a brilliant goal. It was unlucky there, Trossard. Tried to chip it over to Havertz. Over hit it. Burnley have the ball back. Considering... I mean, there was an appeal for a penalty there on Trossard. But... Um, I don't think it's been given. It is a bit of a snooze fest. When we went 1-0 up there, I thought we were going to go 4 or 5 nil up real quick, but I do think it will be difficult. Prime Alexis or Prime Aubameyang? I'm going to be honest. I think Alexis was a little bit better. Aubameyang was an amazing goal scorer, but Alexis was an amazing player. You could just give him the ball, he'll make something happen himself. So I'm going... I'm going Alexis. And that's hard because I was a big Aubameyang fan, but Alexis was different. That guy was different, different level, man. Um, Burnley have the ball back. I tell you what, they're starting to grow a little bit into the game and I don't like it. I do not like it. Why? Like They're getting a little bit of confidence now, which is not good. They're not doing much, but they're just growing into it. Fringpong scored again for Bayer Leverkusen. Probably the most attacking... Right back around. Would you trade Saliba and Saka for Mbappe? I mean, that's crazy because it's genuine. It's probably harder to replace Saliba. I'll say no to that one. I will say no to that one. Just so they don't think, you know, I, I dislike the players. Martinelli and Saka would have done it. It's for Fauna for Burnley. Come on, man. Get this game out of sight. Should have been done and dusted already. And they've got the ball again, Burnley. S S Steve, is it? I don't. Some of these guys, I don't even know who they are. I've never heard of them. Championship players. Uh, ESR's on the bench. He is on the bench, which is great that he's back. Joseph said it's the controlled style of football. I know, but you know what it is, bro. Second from bottom in the league. Second worst defence in the league. One nil up after four minutes. Big Champions League game midweek. I don't want this to be any sort of contest. I want Arsenal to just win this game and end it. And just then you can take people off. Think about Thursday. It's Saturday, oh, Wednesday, not Thursday. I'm so used to Europa League. I still think we play on Thursday. Um, here's Saka. And I really hope that Smith Rowe gets some minutes today, by the way, because he needs some minutes. Should be no excuse for him today, as long as we can, you know, maybe go two or three goals up. Maybe you get him 20, 25 minutes of um, of game time. Here's Saka. Edge of the penalty area. Arsenal on the attack. Can we test the goalkeeper out here? We need a second goal. We need a second goal. It'll be game over, in my opinion. Burnley are not offering much, but 1-0 is dangerous. Problem we've got here today, when we get on the attack, they're putting players behind the ball. Oh, unlucky. We're trying. We're probing. Odegaard is... Um, that was close there. O Odegaard's doing well in that 10 roll today. Getting between the lines well and they're finding it difficult to get him. Smith Rowe is finished. Nah, he's not, man. Well, we'll wait and we'll make judgments at the end of the season. We'll we'll give him till the end of the season. Arsenal on the attack again. Starting to cause them a few more problems now. We've got to move the ball a little bit quicker. And I think the second goal is there. Lovely ball from Odegaard again. Saka. I think I mean I don't know if Havertz was on there. You could argue we should have found him there. 
Saka's taking all the in-swinging corners from the right-hand side, all the in-swingers, and I'm assuming Rice will do it on the other side. Sean said he's finished at Arsenal, will be on loan next year. I, I think with Smith Rowe, though, I just... Would you loan him out? I, I, I feel like he's too established a player to be loaned out. I think you've either got to keep him and try and play him or just sell him and just say that it hasn't worked. I, I, I think to loan out a player of that quality, uh, you know, he, he should be on the Arsenal bench if you're loaning him out. So I, I don't know. It's a difficult one with ESR. You know, I, I've always thought there was a real player there, but maybe this injury and, and the time out has halted his development, which can happen. If you are injured or you have 18 months as a young player where you don't play a lot of football and injuries, it's going to hold you back. Odegaard, find Saka right-hand side again. Everything that happens for Arsenal happens down that right-hand side, doesn't it? Saka and Odegaard. You know, we don't get the ball as much to Martinelli as we do to Saka, which is uh, a bit frustrating at times. Hype said uh, the same as um, as Wilshire. Yeah. Had all the talent in the world. Oh, Trossard. See, that's the thing. You see, with the false nine thing, sometimes not having that out and out striker, that's where it hurts you. Should have done better there, Trossard. Arsenal still have possession, though. Saka looking for Havertz. Come on, the second goal's it's about, it's lurking, it's waiting. What a ball that was. Look at the touches from. Oh my God. I mean, I, how did have What? Is. is is Kai Havertz playing in Timberland boots? He can't control the ball. The ball just bouncing off him. I don't know what. Trossard's been on the Stellar, the Stellars again. Stellar or Trossard. He's celebrating his birthday. He's missing the ball. Ball's bouncing off Havertz. Absolutely crazy. Cliff said boys are taking too many touches in and around the 18. If they release the ball earlier, we have at least two more. Hope so. I really hope so. Uh, 29 is God awful, says Jerome. Right, I, I actually always had Havertz down as somebody that, for all the criticism of him, the one thing I never really said about Havertz is about his technical ability. I always said, oh, technically he's a good player, got good control, blah, blah, blah. The ball's bouncing off him today. I don't know what's going on. You can't control a bag of cement. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, he's getting a bit of criticism online as well. Havertz's first touch is worse than Sonogo. I don't know. Havertz controlling the ball. Like he's playing in Timberland boots. I don't know what's going on with his touch today. Here's Saliba on the ball for Arsenal. I'm still frustrated that we're only winning this game 1-0. I really am. Kivio's playing quite well. We're doing quite well on that left-hand side, to be honest. Um, see, this, and this, this is what frustrates me with Havertz, right? Those touches uh, potentially can cost you a goal there because he's got in good positions there. If Smith Rowe was playing like that, he'd get dragged. So would Trossard. And Trossard's not even having a great game either. He could have scored. Kivio did well there because Saliba actually got done a little bit there. That's good defending. See, as a centre back, you'd expect that good 1v1 defending. So fair play to, to Kivio there. But yeah, Trossard, listen, don't sleep on Trossard. 10 yards out. Straight across goal. All he's got to do is help it on into the corner. And he basically missed the ball completely. So I'm calling him Stella or Trossard again. I think he's been on the beers or the lagers, whichever one it is. But uh, I'm frustrated that we're not tuning up. Big up Marco in the chat. Hope you're well, bro. Wins headers though, Big C. Can't believe these. I mean, at this rate, we might as well just sign. Um, get Peter Crouch out of retirement. He wins a lot of headers. Get what's that guy who used to play for Czech Republic? Yang Yan Collar was it? You know what I mean? Like, come on, sixty-five million, yeah, but he wins headers. Like, 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 come on, he can't even control the ball today. Looks like he's in the conference. 
Assassin said, I'm cl Curtis, I'm close with someone who works at the Emirates. Apparently part of Declan Rice deal is that he was given a free VIP box for his friends and family. Uh, footballers do actually live their dream. No, I've heard that a lot with players. I, I, I under, I, listen, I don't doubt it. I've heard that before. I've heard one time where, because most players get given a box. I heard a, a, a story where a player asked for two boxes because he was bringing that many people to game. So, yeah, pro probably happens. Probably does happen. Jan Collar, man. You remember them old school beasts in the air? John Carew and them. Here he is, though, Havertz. Come on. Shut us all up and score, please. Come on. Let's get the second goal. Here's Havertz. Come on, Donkey. Come on, Donkey. I think it's a penalty. I think it's a penalty to Arsenal. There we go. It looks like it's been given. Is he given it? That's been given, right? That's got to be a pen. It'll be a VAR check. This should be a penalty to Arsenal. Havertz uh, wins a penalty. Donkey! The donkey's given us a penalty. I wonder if he'll take it. Please don't tell me this is a dive. It has to be. It looked like a pen. Don't tell me he's done the Man United thing again. Will they give him the penalty? Charity settings. And again, what a ball from Martin Odegaard. Oh, it was Trossard who won the penalty, sorry. But Havertz, I mean, I'm not even lying. The first touch from Havertz, it's a bit better. Trossard won the pen, sorry. Is it a dive? Oh, no. That doesn't look great. Is that a penalty or not? What a ball from Odegaard. He's bossing it. I mean, Havertz, you're lucky, bro. It's not a great touch again. Is that a dive, people? Nah, oh, come on. That's a pen, surely. That's a pen. I I'm saying that's a pen, man. That is a pen. There's contact there, man. That's not enough to overturn it. Penalty given. Penalty given. Blatant pen. Havertz with the heavy touch, but we'll let him off. He did get the ball into Trossard. Stella or oh, Trossard. Say sorry now, everybody says. Penalty to the Gunners. And hopefully we go 2 0 up. Bakayo Saka. Or is Odegaard taking it? Who is taking it? Definitely a pen. Don't get me wrong, there ain't a lot of contact, but it's a pen. It's definitely a pen. Mine's delayed again there. Odegaard to take it, the skipper. No, is it Saka or Odegaard? I don't know why it's all going mad. Saka to take it. And it is 2-0. I've seen it already. I've seen it already, which takes away all the excitement. But yeah, Saka's scored... And it's 2-0 to Arsenal. Two penalties in two weeks for Saka, which is great. Burkayo Saka. Stream life today is crazy, people. It popped up that it was 2-0. I haven't even seen the penalty yet. Ah, oh, great pen. Goes the right way, the goalkeeper. Does his usual one finger up. And uh, Fantasy League, you're flying, people, if Saka's in your team at the moment. That should be game over. That should be game over. I'm glad company's getting dealt with anyway because um, this is the fraud that sold us Sambi Lakonga and told us he was the new Yaya Torre. So he deserves everything he gets. 2-0, um, should be game, set and match. People saying dodgy penalty, that's a pen. Just because he didn't make a lot of contact with him, it's a reckless tackle. Reckless. Great pen by Saka because the keeper's actually... Moved quite early as well. Does the few steps. Now, can we get a few more? Do you know, boy, do you know what? He got away with that. Keeper moved that way early as well, but good penalty. Gets enough power, gets it in the corner. And uh, I don't know what the keeper did there. He kind of moved and then hesitated a little bit. And then 2 0 game over. I said 3 0 before. 2-0 at half time. I'm looking for a 4 or 5. I can't lie. I'm looking for a 4 or 5 now. 
Um, I'm just looking here. Any other any other scores in the in the prem? Anything going on in the prem? I would like three 0 by half time. That would be great. Two 0 to Arsenal. Three minutes till half time. Chris said hoping for a five nil. We need to up the goal. Four nil gets us matched with Liverpool. 4-0 gets us level with Liverpool. Bukayo Saka running down the wing. Saka. Da, 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 hey, oh. People saying Wolves are winning. Yes! Wolves are beating Tottenham 1-0. You love to see it. Get in there. João Gomez. Portuguese connection, was it? 1-0 to Wolves. Get in. Things you love to see, people. 1-0 to Wolves. Um, against the Spuds. Nando's in the mud. 2-0 to Arsenal. I, I, think we'll, I think we'll win this 3 or 4 nil. No problem. Liverpool won 4 one Listen, if we can win 4 nil, we're level. We're level with Liverpool. So, let's get another... Listen, let's win 5 nil and have the best... Um, have the best... Goal difference in the Premier League. That would be the ideal scenario. Today's stream... It is, and my apologies, the reactions are not the same as usual. I'm watching it on two screens. One's about 35 seconds in front of the other. And just as Saka was taking the penalty, it turned off, then came back on. I'd missed the penalty and saw that it was 2-0. So I had no reaction to the penalty. So my apologies. Usually I'd be shouting down the house, but um, VPN life today is um, is uh, not at my usual level. So bear with me. Champions League Wednesday against Porto. I will be back in full effect, people. This is a much more subdued me today, unfortunately. Um, but listen, we're winning 2-0, so life is good, people, as Drake and Future once said on the track. Um... Tottenham are losing, which is great. Which is great, people. Aston Villa winning 1-0 against Fulham. Forest 0-0 against West Ham. Newcastle 0-0 against Bournemouth. So the other games are pretty boring at the moment. Uh, yeah, mitigating circumstances. You know I'm usually going crazy, but it's going to be calm and collective today. Which might not be as, uh, as you would have expected. But anyway, James Trafford has the ball. The goalkeeper, AFTV, just got the line up. Send me a link. Listen, anyone got any help with these? Um, I mean, you said VPN booster. I don't know nothing about it. Send me a link. Email me or whatever. CurtisShawTV at Hotmail.com. Let me know or hit me up on socials, people. Any help is welcome. I did see that like the next seven games are all televised. So there ain't going to be no problem there. But yeah, VPN settings today was always going to be hard work. Newcastle can't finish their dinner again. That's what I'm saying. You've got a striker like Isak, but he's injured too much. That's why it's risky for us to buy him, really. I do rate him as a player. Uh, the key to understanding what Arteta sees in Havertz, Curtis, is to ignore what he does with the ball. He is there strictly for off the ball. <laughs> I mean, I get that. Yeah, runs around, presses, links up, but I, I don't know. It's strange. It's strange. Imagine buying a player and saying... Ignore what he does on the ball. Like, it's crazy. Something I've never heard. See, buy a subscription to USA Network. You'll be the king of 3 p.m. kickoffs. I'll try and do that. I don't, I'll don't. i look into that. I will look into that. I, do, I can watch it through Peacock. But USA Network, it doesn't let me do it. So then I have to go VPN. It's a delay. It's it's a bit mad. Oh, Trossard, Trossard's absolutely steaming. I'm sorry. He went out last night. He, he's back in stellar oh, Trossard zone today. I mean, he's not having a terrible game. He won as a penalty, but he did miss a sitter. He's, um, his confidence is high, which I like, because he's doing little flicks and little skills, and I'm all for that. But when they're not working, you look like you've had 10 pints, you know? So, uh, But we're winning 2-0 anyway, so we're calm. Forrester winning 1-0. Good. I want Forrester to win. I want Forrester to stay up. 1-0 to Forrest against West Ham. It's been a bad week for West Ham. Got slapped by us. Apparently, Forrest winning one 0 Although I haven't seen the score update yet. Saka gets a yellow card. Yellow card for Bakayo. For what exactly? Oh, Bakayo, that's stupid, bro. 
Referee blows the whistle, kicks the ball away. Them things annoy me because, you know, if this referee gets overhyped in the second half, gives you a stupid red card, you know, we don't need that. You know, hopefully it'll be all right. It doesn't often get booked, but silly yellow card to get. I'm doing a like check. What we at? 1.2k likes. That's better, people. Halftime whistle goes. Halftime whistle goes. Burnley, nil. Arsenal, two. Game's over, to be honest, as a contest. Burnley have got absolutely nothing. They, they might as well just, they might as well start in the championship now. They're done. I actually, I don't know. I feel like they're the worst team I've watched in the Prem. And I know Sheffield United have had worse defeats than Burnley, but they have got absolutely nothing in that team. I don't know what they've got. Um, sometimes you think to yourself, when a team comes up into the Premier League, surely you've you've waited all that time to get promoted. Why not have a little bit of a go at it? Like they are, this is a championship team. It's genuinely a championship team in the Premier League. They've got nothing. Um... Their man Sheffield United. I think sometimes it's it's actually a business decision that these teams come up and um, they decide to just stick with what they've got, get relegated, get the um, the parachute payments, and then try and come back up. It's probably how they make their money, but they are absolutely horrible. Um, Tottenham are losing one nil, which is great. Adds to the day, gives us a. A bit of banter as well. Hopefully, um, hopefully Wolves can win that. I'm actually going to put that game on. Actually, uh, we're all Wolves today, of course. Wolves FC, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, they're there for the bread. Yeah, listen, there's a lot of bread in that. You get promoted, don't spend a lot of money, get relegated, get the parachute payments, win the championship, come back up, get the more Premier League money. They make a lot of money out of that. Norwich teams like that. They've made a fortune out of that. Um, SAF said we desperately need a striker. Somebody said at the start of this stream, I forget who it was, um, maybe we could go with Trossard next season as the striker. And I said, listen, you're going to have days where that false nine thing, it doesn't work. You need the striker who can pin the centre back who gets shots off, who's powerful, who's a presence. Trossard drifts all over the place. Now, Trossard today is having a very up-and-down game. He won the penalty, a couple of nice flicks. His confidence is sky high. You can see it. You know, he's trying to take people on. He tried to take it around the goalkeeper. But also, he's actually missed the best chance of the game, which if we weren't 2 nil up, I would have been having a meltdown about he actually had a one-on-one -on -one as well, but he was offside, so we let him off with that. But he missed a sitter 10 yards out, rolled across the area, unmarked, just side foot into the bottom corner. He missed the ball completely. So you can see, look, I love Trossard as a player, and I've said many times, find a way for him to get into this Arsenal team. Arsenal need a striker. I, I don't think the club should get too caught up on the fact that we slapped up West Ham and we beat Liverpool and think, oh, maybe we don't need a striker. We need a striker. We need to sell Eddie and Ketia this summer, get as much money as you can get for him. Jesus will stay for another year, I'm sure. Rotate him or whatever, and you sign a striker. Now, I have no problem with Trossard playing up front. I think he can play up front. He's a different player. But what I'm saying is, do you win the title with Trossard playing up front every week? I'm not sure if you do, you know, if they've got Haaland up front. Very good player, but what you've got to look at, football, it kind of works in roundabouts. Ain't it funny that everybody started going down the false nine route and then all of a sudden Man City bought um, Haaland, six foot five, and Liverpool bought Darwin Nunes, who I think six foot two, six foot three. So the two teams that we're actually competing with have gone out there and signed tall, direct strikers. And I know a lot of people have criticised Darwin Nunes. I actually still think there there is a really good player there. Um, listen, he, he has got that kind of Timo Werner, Mrs. Sitters thing about him. But you look at the goal he scored today. There is a player there. 
There is a player there, and he is getting better. His numbers are better than last season. So, but I, I, I just think we do need a striker. You need the option um, of of going, you know, in a different direction. Uh, Havertz is, is the best worst player I've ever seen. I actually said that about Nunes once. I don't know if Havertz is the best worst player I've ever seen. I just think he's a he's probably just one of the worst players. I mean. Somebody said in the in the stream today, it was a great comment, he said, um, to understand what Havertz does, watch what he does off the ball. But it's just crazy because football is played on the ball, isn't it? We need to talk about what he does on the ball as well. And he doesn't do a lot on the ball. Um, but it is what it is. We're tuning up. Listen, let, let's just say, yeah, Latte, sell Eddie. Someone will buy him, I'm sure. I think today has been comfortable. Comfortable. The positive thing about this... We're 2-0 up. I would say the game's over. I think within 15, 20 minutes, you can take three or four players off and concentrate on Wednesday night when we've got a big, big game. So I would like to see us get... If we can get a third goal in the first 15, 20 minutes of the second half, I think then you look at maybe, I don't know, Declan Rice, maybe a Saka. I have to say, um, despite the difficulties of watching this game... On the VPN, I think Odegaard has been outstanding today. I really do. I know it's Burnley. I know they're not very good. But I feel like Martin Odegaard over the last few weeks is we're looking at the Odegaard of last season. Um, I just think the weight of his pass has been superb. It, it really has. He's bossing the game. He's, 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 he's really back to his best, in my opinion. His goal was absolutely outstanding. Controls it on the edge of the penalty area, lets it bounce and just drills it into the bottom corner. The technique is outstanding. And um, listen, we need him. I, I, I've said many times, we, I think most of us were critical of Odegaard at the start of the season because the end product wasn't good enough. But I've always reiterated that for Arsenal to be successful, we need Martin Odegaard to be in form. Uh, it's as simple as that. He is the most creative player in the Arsenal team. And he's probably the, the guy that can split a defence open better than anyone. And uh, I think he's starting to play really well for us, um, which is great. Give some respect to Kivior. Uh, I think Kivior today has done well. Again, listen, we know the quality of the opposition is lower than what you're going to play against most weeks. Burnley are absolutely dreadful. Um, they're getting relegated. They ain't going to win many games this season. They are absolutely terrible. Um but yeah, I think, listen, some people said in the chat there, Havertz, listen, Havertz, unfortunately, is a conversation that we are going to continue to have, right? It is. And it was always going to be like that for a number of reasons. And I don't want people to think, you know, agenda, oh, you've got an agenda. There's no agenda. It's as simple as that. We signed him from a team that London rival. We've bought a lot of players from there before that haven't worked. This time, this was the most expensive player we've ever bought from Chelsea. Today, his first touch is letting him down. Something that I have never actually criticised about Kai Havertz. I've always said he's actually good technically, you know, with his touch and things like that. His touch today has been crazy. Now, yeah, he plays the pass into Trossard that leads to the goal. Fair enough. But... It's just, he's, he's such a frustrating player to watch, you know, and, and, and we, we're all desperately trying to find positives in his game. But, you know, it is difficult. It is difficult. It is, honestly. Um, but, hey, Brian says, uh, almost seems like Havertz and Trossard are playing a two-striker system. Yeah, he has pushed high today. Sometimes Trossard drops in and Havertz goes beyond him. Makes it difficult for the centre-backs to pick up a player. But, yeah. TMB said, Havertz only activates in the box. This is Mikel's plan. Like I said, and I, I tried yesterday on the preview show, I said, somebody said, tell me some positives about Kai Havertz. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to really cap and I'm going to drag out every single positive that I can. Unfortunately, I finished after about 15 seconds. I just said, look, he's, he's a nuisance. He makes runs into the area. He'll pull defenders and midfielders out the way. Uh, he may give you an opportunity to get some space in the area. But apart from that, 
you know, you ain't getting that much. He wins a few headers. Like, you know, you just expect more for what you got. You know, you expect more. If you go into into Selfridges and you buy a, Gu a Gucci shirt or a Louis Vuitton top for eight hundred pound, you don't expect you know it to start ripping after you've wore it once. You know, it's like we haven't got value for money. It's like we bought something designer and realised that it's fake and it's from Wish. Um, yeah, I got him as well. Yeah, Odegaard in the fantasy team, and I got Salah in there, goal and assist today as well. Saka, yeah, another goal. Yeah. Um, White Glove said, Kai making direct runs, heading it down to others. It allows us to cut through low blocks better. Something we need, even though it's flawed. And I do get that. I do get that. But uh, yeah, uh, let, let me not say too much. Let me not say too much. Because uh, then Cooper says things like, it's Donkey Kai grazing on the grass as usual. <laughs> you know when you drive through the countryside and you just see animals just walking around the big field and they just they pop their head down a bit eat a bit of grass you know the car goes by it just kind of has a look at you and then puts its head back down that's what Havertz is right now he's just he is he's grazing the pitch you're gonna see him start eating the pitch soon and just lift his head up oh yeah I need to win a header wins a header and then just puts the head back down oh it's what I do off the ball like you know I, it's, it re it is the donkey out of Shrek at this point. It's Eddie Murphy settings, people. Uh, TMB said, Kurt, his quality of opposition aside, Kivy or he's not giving me nightmares. Not as comfy today, bro. You could go on the pitch today, TMB, and get through this game. This Burnley team absolutely stink. <laughs> Honestly, this Burnley team stinks. They are one of the worst teams I've seen in the Prem. This channel said, Monthly, uh, love for Big C, the goat of the watch-alongs. Big up yourself, bro. Young Gunner said, would you take Jao Pedro from Brighton? I like him. He's having a good season. I saw a thing the other day, though. Was it? I think Atletico Madrid were being linked with him. And Brighton were quoting... Well, I don't know if Brighton quoted it, but the story was saying Brighton would want £80 million for him. Now, would I pay £80 million pounds for Jao Pedro? I wouldn't. I do rate him. He's in the Brazil squad. He actually started, I think, one of the games or he came on at half time. I just don't think... Ja Listen, Brighton don't sell good players cheap unless their contract's running out. So he's only been there 18 months. I wouldn't pay 80 million for João Pedro. I do like him, though. I think he will end up at a big club. Uh, Wama said, uh, is he in the long term another Giroud? I mean, Giroud was, for all the... For all the um, criticism that I had of Giroud. Giroud kind of played for the wrong club, if you know what I mean. Like Giroud, Giroud has shown since leaving Arsenal, he's a very, very good striker, especially as a target man. I'd say he's, one, he's been one of the best target men strikers in the last probably six or seven years. Record goal scorer for France, won the, won the, um, won the World Cup, you know, I think the problem at Arsenal, you had Alexis Sanchez on one side, a goal-scoring winger. You've got Theo Walcott on the other side, a goal-scoring winger. Giroud wants crosses. Giroud went to Chelsea, Hazard and Willian, and he thrived. He's still at AC Milan doing bits now. Does bits for France. So we had two wingers that wanted to score goals. They didn't want to get the ball out of the feet and put crosses in. I used to go crazy at Giroud. When he played for Arsenal, he used to drive me insane. 15 games without scoring. I could not believe what I was watching. He cost us the Premier League that season. But I just don't think we suited his style. He's definitely a good player. I don't know if Havertz is an Olivier Giroud. Because Giroud has natural you know, instincts of a striker. I don't know if, if, if Havertz does, but... If you had the short, uh, Dylan said, if you had the choice, would you strengthen the squad or only sign Mbappe, meaning he is the only signing? Bro, he's the only signing. I'm telling you, I, I, I've, we had the debate yesterday. It was a fantastic debate. Would you swap Saka and Martinelli for Mbappe? I said yes. 56% of you in the poll said no. 44% said yes. I would do it because I look at him as an absolute game changer of a footballer. He is, his level is above, he's, he's, he's probably the best player in the world, to be honest. So I would sacrifice a lot to get him in. I look at it like this. 
Arsenal are currently third in the Premier League, right? We'll go two points behind Liverpool if we win. In fact, we're second now because we're winning. If Mbappe was in this Arsenal team now, where would Arsenal be in the league right now? If we're two points behind Liverpool and Jesus has got four goals this season. If you change him for Kylian Mbappe, where are Arsenal in the league? They're top. They're top. With his pace, the amount, the, the way he would scare defences, we would be top of the Premier League. And you know what? I'll ask, a, I'll ask a, a striker. Here he is. Yep. Killian. Killian. Talk to me. I mean, they said I was mad when I said to Arteta, let's get Killian. Now Sky Sports are asking him, and they're apparently geniuses. I know. Killian. I mean, listen, he's not likely to sign for us, is he? But no. be unbelievable signing, That'd wouldn't That'd be sick. Oh, game changer. 14. The new Thierry regen. Yeah, merch. What? Merch. Oh, merch galore, mate. He'll be yeah. cleaning out the, the armour. What are you saying today? 2-0 up, Burnley? Yeah, easy. Light work. Easy. You'd probably score against Burnley, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, I know. What are you saying? Do you think Chelsea can do anything against City later? Or um, are we nah. not happening? Cole Palmer maybe has a chance of scoring. Old club as well. Yeah. Can have a point. What are we saying? Harland, De Bruyne Harland, too much? yeah. Give me a prediction for this game. 2-0 at half-time. 4-0, probably. 4-0. Couple yeah. more? Yeah. All well, the best, bro. Keep See banging you. goals in. Yeah. Then we'll get you on the pitch. Then I only have to stream once a week then, you know what I mean? Instead, i got to do six days. You better keep scoring. Uh, Elliot said, did someone say merch? Yeah, exactly. Uh, would you trade the Mbappe of centre-backs for Mbappe? <laughs> Listen, as I said yesterday, not only would I give PSG both wingers, I'd give them the training ground... They could have whatever you want. Take it. <laughs> well, we ain't getting Killian. I, I like the dream, though. Is Mbappe to Arsenal happening? 850k. Can we afford it? Love from India. We can afford it. He's worth 15 billion. He's rich. Ask them Denver Nuggets fans if they can afford it. They got Jokic. They've got the Haaland of NBA playing for them. So give us... Jesus, I'm going mad. Look what you've done to me. Second half's underway. It's been, we've been playing for one minute. I'm all over the place. Game's kicked off for a minute ago, and I'm talking about um, Jokic. Second half started, people. Uh, right, I'm all over the place. Oh, we, oh my, we've just scored. I can't believe it. Don't tell me it's that. Saka's scored 3-0. I haven't even seen the goal. You're getting fantasy points galore. I'm all over the place, people. I'm all over the place. Didn't even know it had started. Burkayo Saka running down the wing Saka why didn't I put him on my fantasy team this morning he was too expensive times all over the place celebrations are wrong I haven't even seen the goal I've just got the goal update saying 3 0 Odegaard what a ball Saka right foot drill on near post bang Odegaard assists Saka scores again love it Burkayo Saka running down the wing Saka here we go Saka's having an unbelievable season now I said this in the week didn't I um, his numbers that he's producing he's turning into that clutch baller man like like what Salah does he just bags he don't even need to play well he's, he could end up with 20 league goals if he carries on like this unbelievable Again, look at Odegaard between them. Look at the first two. Oh, yo, I, swear, I don't like saying things like this often. And it is Burnley, so I won't get carried away. He's moving like Mesut today. I'm, I, I don't say that often. And I don't mean overall. So don't, don't quote me on this. But he's moving. He's cutting them a pop. Every player does that circles on the socks thing now, don't they? Kyle Walker was the first guy I saw do that. Now they all do it. Saka, 3-0, game over. Let's get a Saka hat-trick. You're right. When's the last time an Arsenal player scored a hat-trick? I can't think who that even would have been. I'm assuming maybe a Bamiyan got a hat-trick at some stage. I can't even remember. Even Mini Shaw loves the merch. Listen, you got to love the merch, especially when the team's doing well. Oh, Eddie, jeez. Let me put some respect on Eddie's name. Sheffield United hat-trick. Apparently Tottenham have equalised... Damn. Wolves bottled it. Only two minutes into the second half. How are you conceding already? 3-0 to the Gunners. Yeah, apologies, Eddie. I, I disrespected you, man. You got your hat-trick against uh, 
Sheffield United. 29 with the pre assist. 29. Can you do something for me? Um, listen, we're comfy now anyway. Four minutes into the second half, although it says two minutes on the clock. My apologies. I was uh I haven't even read the super chats. There was uh let me get through them so we're up to date. I don't want people to think they're getting ignored. Uh, agenda against Havertz is unreal. Why so much hate? Not hate, just uh, constructive criticism is what we'll call it. Um, yeah. Listen, the ball was bouncing off him in the first half, bro. We're not going to ignore it. I refuse to ignore it. Uh, TGG, but, 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 Kai does his work off the ball. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? We signed you to get on the ball, bro, and make something happen. Uh, you know, not just be a nuisance, but hey. Uh, Sam said, uh, Kyle, uh, I think he put Kai the space attacker. If he improves his trampoline touch, he could be useful. The second goal is what he's good at. Hold up, then offload the ball. Listen, that's what you need to use him for when he's in the team. All jokes aside, he's got to go and give us some presents, get the ball up to him, and then play off him and, and do what he did in that Man City game at Wembley. Hold the ball up, give it to your Martinelli's. Give it to your Bakayos, give it to your older gods, and we play off him. We use him as that link man to play off, and, that, and that's that's the best you're gonna get from him. Chris said people are really trying hard to justify 65 million uh, Havertz not worth it. Uh, TGG said, "See, I'm really excited about this team with a few more signings. I can see us doing in some doing something. Uh, knowing Arsenal, we'll probably get Luke De Jong. Do you know the problem, TGG? Right? This is the problem." You get to a point where you go, okay, you look at Arsenal now and you probably go, two signings may be off winning the title. Probably a striker, maybe another centre mid. You could put, realistically, in this team right now, you would replace probably Havertz with a top, top quality centre mid and you would you would sign a centre forward, right? You'd put Timber at left back or, or whoever. So we're only a couple of players away from what you would say that team could win the league. But the problem you have, Man City will go into the market and they will do something. So you think, oh, we're only two players off City. And then City will go, oh, we'll sign him and we'll sign him. And then you go, oh, damn, now we're four players behind Man City. So that, that that's the problem. You've got to do it sooner rather than later, which is why. And I know some people go, oh, it's harsh on Havertz. We can't afford we can't afford the Havertz signings to go wrong very often because we're not like Man City. Like I'm seeing reports today, Man City are going to get rid of um, Jack Grealish in the summer. You know, two seasons at the club, or three, two and a half seasons. First season, second season did better. That's it. Pep's like, right, seen enough. Won a treble, on your bike. You know what I mean? Where well, Arsenal don't do that. If if Arsenal sign a player for big money and it doesn't work, he will stay at Arsenal for three or four years, and that's the problem. You know, because we're not just going to write that signing off. Let's hope Saka can get a hat-trick today. That would be great. That would be great. I wish I'd put him in my uh, fantasy team, man. Um, Barry said, if we had Jacker instead of Havertz, we'd be top. Possibly. Possibly. How well he played last season. How well he's playing this season. He's top of the um, German league. Ayer said, uh, the fact that team is playing well with Havertz in the team alone should say, many fans slagged off Xhaka once upon a time. Um, yeah, listen, but the problem is Xhaka, Xhaka took four or five years to give us what we needed from him. So you can always understand the frustration with, with Granite because he took so long to produce anything. But at the end, of course, he did. Bournemouth are winning 1-0. Who are Bournemouth playing? Newcastle. They are having a stinker, Newcastle. Newcastle losing at home to Bournemouth. Terrible. Terrible for them. Kivio got done there, pushed him down. Who is that, Goodmanson? Kivio's done all right today. To be honest, there's no Arsenal player that's having a bad, bad game. I obviously, there's a little bit of frustration with Havertz, but he's played a role in one of the goals at least. I, I think Eddie Howe's on his way out of Newcastle. I think at the end of the season, they'll go for a big manager. I think they'll go for a big manager. James Trafford with the ball for Burnley. They, they, uh, we shouldn't be conceding a goal today unless it's from a sloppy set piece or something because they have got nothing really going forward. 
Kivior's not good enough. I, the thing is, I keep saying with Kivior, it's very hard to judge him while he's playing out of position. He ain't a left back. He's a centre back. It's clear as day. He's not a. He's not a left back. Against nippy wingers, he's going to struggle sometimes, isn't he? I know. Again, Man City put Nathan Ake at left back, and he looks great. But doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we can do it. As I always say, what I would say now, three 0 Get to the sixtieth minute. I'll be taking people off. Uh, I know he took Saka off early last week, and Saka looked a little bit frustrated because he was on a hat trick. Um, but keeping our best players fit is more important than anything else. So for me, I, I would like to see two or three players get taken off. Uh, I'd possibly take off Rice. I'd like to see Smith Rowe get some game time as well. Um, Saliba's been off. Is Saliba off? I didn't even... Yo, I'm all over the place. I didn't... People saying Saliba's off. I didn't even know that. Bournemouth have scored again, apparently. It's all going off. Did Saliba come off at half-time? No, he didn't come off at half-time, did he? I thought I'd just seen him. Now nah, Saliba's on. Saliba's still on, man. You lot are winding me up here. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. No, I'm not a no. I mean, yeah, I mean, see you later. No, they know, man. They know. Crew's on his way out, man. I have to say bye. You know what I mean, big up later on, yeah. See you later. Right, back to the game time. Now nah, Saliba's still on, people. You got me thinking Saliba had come off at half time. He's still on. Still three 0 I can't believe that Newcastle are losing at home to Bournemouth. That's going to mash up some uh, some bets today, I tell you. Yeah, get Declan Rice off. Get Declan Rice off this pitch. He's played so many minutes this season. Get him off. Game, The game's gone flat now. I just want Saka to get a hat-trick. I just want Saka to get a hat-trick. And, um, yeah, he, he, do you know what he was saying to me then? He goes, if you, if you put it on mute... I said, it's not on mute, man. I'm just saying bye to you. Don't worry about it. Keep it moving. <laughs> man of the people, man. You know, I got all sorts going on. But yeah, oh, Dre, you know how it goes, bro. You know how it goes. Cruiser striker, no winger, man. No winger. Striker business. Um, big up, Justin, man. Hope you're well, bro. Big up, Curtis in the family. His crew's better than you. I give it him. I give it him. Do you know what? He's ahead of me at that age because the difference is. I didn't even start playing for a team till I was about 10 or 11 because when I was a kid, they didn't play games when you were like seven or eight years of age. So, you know, he's been playing matches since he was about six or seven years old. So his development's further than mine. He's played loads of games already. So I, I'm, I said, he asked me this. He goes, am I better than you at this age? I said, you probably are. Probably are, to be honest, as painful as it is to admit. Uh, <laughs> now, nah, big him up, man. Big him up. Um, Odegaard is down. One of the... Uh, there's a bad injury here by the look of it to one of the Burnley players. They're holding his head. What happened there? Odegaard clattered him. Oh, it isn't his head. He's holding... Oh, no. Ramsey, man. The young boy, Ramsey. I feel for him. That is not nice. I think he's done something bad there. Odegaard will probably feel a bit bad about that. He's clat well, yeah, I wouldn't say he's clattered him, but he's caught him. It looks like he's jarred his leg on the pitch. Cruz doesn't slip on the pitch there. I'm telling you now that 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 Astro turf there was a, there was a bobble there. You had the brain though, bro. Halfway line goes Vision Express. Come on, let them know. Give us a shout out, says Retro Imports. Watching the game down in rainy Cornwell. Big up yourself, bro. This um, this Burnley player, Ramsey, uh, I'm, I'm gutted for him. I am. I'm really unhappy for him. That is a bad injury. You can tell, man. You just know. That could that I don't know if that it looks like he might have jarred his knee there. I think he'll I don't think he'll be playing football for a while. 
got to be honest, the player's having a water break. Sad to see that. Ramsey's a young player as well. Jacob Ramsey's brother, people were saying. They're showing you the goals back. First goal, Martinelli assist outside of the foot. Odegaard, what a touch. Abs that's, pro that's the best goal he scored this season. That is outstanding. Saka, penalty. Keeper goes the right way, can't get there. And then third goal, Odegaard. Good. See, that's good from Havertz to hold up. Odegaard finds Saka, drops the shoulder. What I love about that goal from Saka, nearly every week when he gets the ball there, he cuts in on his left foot, tries to bend that in the far corner there. He drops the shoulder, goes on the right foot and smashes it near post through for the net. So I'm I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Um, John said, became a father in January. Arsenal unbeaten since... Uh, baby girl bringing good luck. Come on, man. The Arsenal community is growing. Bring that good luck. Newcastle have equalised against Bournemouth. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Newcastle are, are missing quite a lot of players. I don't know. Let me know who scored. Solanke. Solanke got the goal for Bournemouth. I don't know who scored for Newcastle. Still a break in play, which tells you how bad this injury is. This is this is bad. This is really really bad. I I absolutely hate seeing this. They're giving him oxygen on the pitch. I mean, you could tell straight away that it was bad the way they surrounded him. The Arsenal players were surrounding him. Anthony Gordon scored a penalty. I feel for him. Do feel for him. Is this? I thought that old man was crying. Then they're giving the man oxygen. Like you don't do that for no little injury. This is a. This is a terrible injury. I don't know if it was the pitch. Like Odegaard tackles him and then he kind of jars his leg into the pitch as he's... Oh, it's a bad one. It's a bad, bad one. They're still treating him. Looks like there's doctors on the pitch and everything. So, speedy recovery, man. Um, but listen, Villa have scored 2-0. Um, is it Watkins again? Is it Ollie Watkins who scored the second? Watkins again. It's typical, isn't it? Before the stream, people were saying in the chat, get Watkins. I'm going, nah, man, I don't really rate him. He ain't good enough for Arsenal. He goes and bags two goals. Still not convinced, though. But what's that? 12 goals, 10 assists, having a great season. This is a long, long delay. Still treating him. I think you'll see... You're probably going to see 10 minutes added on at the end of the game, at least. Um, starting to rain there now. This is crazy, man. I think as I've seen this happen before where like when a player does a really bad injury, like the panic, they need oxygen to calm down because they know like it's a really bad injury. So that thought process uh, it is hard to watch. I, it's, it's, it's annoying that they keep zooming in on it. Um, they're making a couple changes, Burnley. Obviously, Ramsey's coming off. I don't know who else is coming off. Now the game's not he's being carried off. Uh he is sitting up. That's the only good thing. Good to see him sitting up at least, you know. He has got oxygen mask over him. Um so that that's the one positive there. He's sitting up as he's stretched off. Game's back underway. Hopefully he's all right. Hopefully it's not too bad. It's it's going to be something, but let's hope it's not um let's hope it's not no major injury. George, thank you for the super chat, bro. Big C, I hope I don't set off the chat. What are you doing in your time when you're not streaming? Look like a bit of a cook. I mean, listen, man, I, I'm one of, I tell you my cooking, right? My cooking is like, it's, it's limited, but I specialize in it. So I've got like a set amount of meals, what I rotate, that I cook very well. But I, I but my, I, you know, I can't, I haven't got a huge variety of dishes. So you're getting, there's probably four or five dinners that I would, I believe I can cook at a very high level. Outside of that, I'm struggling a little bit. So, and no, I don't mean beans on toast. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep it a book. I've I got, I got a few good dishes, but there ain't loads of them. That's where I'm at, you know? Um, nah, no boiled eggs and them things there, what people are saying. Boiled eggs and burgers, you know, I can do a bit more than that. But yeah, man, that's where I'm at. Man said, can you cook water? 
No, we got a bit more than that. We got a bit more than that. Still, oh my days, Trossard! I'm telling you, get him off. Yeah, he's steaming. He's absolutely steaming. I, I've said, I said this a few weeks ago. People thought I was joking. Like he is steaming. Keeper plays it out. Terrible. Get caught out. Martinelli. Martinelli actually should have got... Yo, what a pass. Bicycle kick. Uh, Martinelli should have given the ball to Trossard now. Roll it to him on the floor. It ends up having to be like an overhead kick. Trossard, 10 yards out. The only thing I'll let him off with, the goalkeeper's in front of him. but Not the goalkeeper. The, the centre-back is close to him, but still should do better. Still should do better than that. Um, Trossard's been clubbing in Burnley. You'd be a brave man to do that, I tell you. I mean, Manchester's round the corner from Burnley. Maybe he was in Manny last night. Salt Bay Shaw setting, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Season up the day. Oh, Forrest winning 2-0, said Max. Get in. Come on, Forrest. I don't want Forrest to get relegated, man. I want them to stay in the Prem. 2-0. West Ham, I tell you, that could be Moisey done, you know. I think Moisey's not far away. Maybe not yet, but he's not far off, in my opinion. 6-0 against Arsenal, then 2-0 against Forrest. He's he's got to be hanging on to his job there. The fans are calling for him as well. Um, oh, we're on the attack. Come on, it's four. He's not drunk. Leandro Trossard makes it four nil. For all the beers, for all the lagers, Leandro Trossard makes it four nil to Arsenal, and finally it's game over. I mean, it was game over anyway. I don't actually have a song for Trossard, do I? He's played like he was drunk, but he's made it four. And apparently Wolves have scored at the same time. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, people. I hope that Wolves goal is true. Um, let's have a look at the goal. It was Kivior. Does well. Left-hand side. An Arsenal finish. 4-0. And you can see how relieved he is. He knows he should have. Oh, so they have scored, yeah, Wolves. I thought, because when one person says it, I'm like, is that definite? Or 4-0 to Arsenal and Wolves beating Tottenham 2-1. Brilliant. Kai Priasist again, yeah. Priasist settings. You said take him off. No, I said give him another pint. He's steaming. 4-0 to Arsenal. We are level with Liverpool on goal difference. One more to go ahead of them. Um, let me give credit where credit's due. Ma Havertz wins the first header. Gives it to Odegaard. Gives it to Kivior. Havertz quite... Well, Havertz had a shot. It was blocked. But he does play his part in the first bit. Was it Neto who scored? Come on. Get Pedro to the carpet, man. Let me get the tweet out. Bossard 4-0. And now the spuds are losing as well. Beautiful. Um, I want to see changes now, people. I want to see changes. Make some subs now. Rest them for Porter. 4-0 to the Gunners. Probably the easiest game we've had all season. They are absolutely horrific. Um, I said 3-0. We're going to go beyond that by the look of it. I think it will be 6 I want to see five or six. Imagine getting back-to-back -back six nils. That's probably never happened in the Premier League. Um, Neto. Oh, Neto got the assist, not the goal. I really hope Tottenham get beat. That'll be funny. Very funny. Neto's an absolute baller. I love watching him play. So direct. I didn't think Wolves would have... Because uh, I think Mateus Cunha's injured now for a while. Wasn't sure whether, whether they'd have goals. Gomez with both goals. Fair enough. Um, yeah, this this is absolute light work. This is as light as it gets. Three changes. Oh, God. This is when you know your bench is not in a great uh, position. Eddie and Ketty or Cedric and Reese Nelson. It's not exactly the triple substitution of dreams, is it? I've got to be honest. Saka's off, he looks fuming again, head down, he's thinking, brother, let me score a hat-trick. Two weeks in a row on two goals, gets dragged. you got to hold it, bro. There's a bigger picture, but you don't look happy. Ben White comes off. 
Maybe the rain's taking his suntan off him. He said, get me off before all my suntan peels off. So Ben White's off. Saka's off. Who's the third one coming off? Declan Rice looks like he's putting something happen with his contact. Trossard coming off. Surprised at that. I mean, he is steaming, so I get it at the same time. Um, no, nah, man, Odegaard is absolutely amazing today. Man of the match says, go, I think he's been outstanding today, regardless of the opposition. Uh, Alfred said, even with the misses, Trossard's still in position to score. That's right. That Jesus wouldn't be in. Rather have a striker who's always there eventually. I absolutely agree with that. What I love about Trossard, to say Trossard isn't a natural striker, he's always in goal-scoring positions. You're absolutely bang on. Where Jesus is a natural striker, and a lot of the time he's not there. So you're, you're bang on with that. Yolandi said four weeks, ago, four weeks ago today, his dad passed away. We haven't lost a game. Just saying, RIP your dad. Yeah, man, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's guiding, hopefully, the Gunners to, you know, victory, Premier League success and Champions League success. Big up, Yolandi. Appreciate you tuning in as always. Smith Rowe's on the bench. Now, this, this is what winds me up. Give Smith Rowe 21 minutes. Why are we giving Cedric 21 minutes? You know, get, get Smith Rowe on the pitch. I want five. I want six, actually. What Saka will be frustrated with is, really, maybe he could have took Martinelli off and left Saka on to get the hat-trick, you know. But, listen, the club is bigger than any individual player, you know, and that's how you got to hold it. A song for Trossard, man, no sober. <laughs> bro, Stella or Trossard, bro, I'm telling you. But, listen, I, I like Trossard. I like the fact um, that he's always there, you know. What we need now is a Havertz goal. That's what we need. Havertz goal would be the icing on the cake. That would be brilliant. That would be brilliant. 2-1 to Bournemouth. What's going on with these scores today? Absolutely incredible. Tottenham losing at home to Wolves. And um, Newcastle losing at home to Bournemouth. Unbelievable. Who scored the second for... Um, for Bournemouth. I don't know who got the second. Was it Solanke again? I'm not sure. That will be an incredible result for Bournemouth. I thought they would have lost that today. Uh, I'm calling it now 7-1. Do you know I'd be disappointed with that? We should not be conceding. We should not be. I'm going to go 20 minutes to go with the changes. I'm going to go 5-0. I think we get one more. I think we get one more goal. Uh, yeah, how did we lose to Newcastle? It happens, don't it? We were poor that day. Uh, Christian said, Curtis has been a long time. Hope you're good after this past week. And the comments on Saka, then man, a laughable world-class Saka. He's getting there. Definitely getting there. Listen, it, it's an opinion, isn't it? It's an opinion. He's getting to the point. You finish this season, 16, 17, 18 league goals, 12 assists. We get to the Champions League final. You know, then there's no argument. There's no argument. Chelsea, can you do us a favour? I mean, I said yesterday, don't allow Man City to give you that false hope. So what I will say, anybody who is going to watch the game, watch it with no expectation. Don't go into the game thinking Chelsea are going to do me a favour. Just chill, watch it, don't have no expectation. If it's nil-nil after 60 minutes, don't start building up your hopes. Just stay out of it until the full-time whistle goes. Watch it, but don't have any expectation. Because all they do is let you down. Every week I watch Man City, I think they're going to drop points and they don't. I actually think they might beat Chelsea comfortably. Um, I, I don't rate Chelsea. But, you know, the hope is there. Cole Palmer against his boiled club. He's going to have a point to prove. Sterling was sold by, Chelsea, by City. He's going to have a point to prove. So you hope there's a narrative that Chelsea could do something, but I wouldn't um, I wouldn't bank on it, to be honest. I wouldn't bank on it. Pele said, uh, like you said, Curtis, he's getting there. Why get rid of another world-class player? Saka is irreplaceable. I suppose you mean with the Mbappe thing that I was saying. Because the, the reason I said it is because two players can be world-class, but one player can still be significantly better than the other player. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and I think Mbappe is probably the best player in the world. Oh, Eddie's out here again. Eddie's arrived, people. I thought I thought your defence was in trouble. 
Odegaard, great ball out wide. Martinelli, he's had this right back on toast all game. Chips it in. Eddie and Ketio. He's asking for a corner. Like, don't. Just don't do it to yourself, bro. Don't embarrass yourself, Eddie. Leave Eddie in Burnley. Like, genuine. Just drive off. Say, Eddie, listen, mate. Do me a favour. Uh, I've left my bottle in that other goal at, um, at the end of the game. And then just run. Get on the coach and wheel spin out of Burnley and leave him there. Just leave him. Let him play for Burnley, man. I don't know how this guy plays for Arsenal and gets 100 bags a week. I respect the hustle. I really do respect it. I want the coach wheel spinning out of Burnley with him not on there. Um, you know, he should be playing for Burnley. Cedric gets absolutely wiped out there. Uh, goal kick to Burnley. <laughs> I'm telling you, get out of there. Let him play for Burnley in the championship. He'd find his way back somehow, wouldn't he? He'd get back. Who's the mannequin in the 14? I've been trying to work that out for the last year or so. Havertz and Eddie, dumb and dumber. I think that's disrespectful to dumb and dumber, to be honest. <laughs> Give him to company for, if I say, Vinny, for that um, Sambi Lakonga thing you said. We got you a present. Oh, what you got? I'm gonna give you Eddie for twenty five million, right? Um, no, no, no negotiation. Man said drive off. Just drive off, bro. Honestly, get on the coach. Wheel spin out of there. Just get out of there as quick as you can. Uh, take Odegaard off. Odegaard for me. I mean, Saka scored two goals. Odegaard's been man of the match. Odegaard's been man of the match. He's been outstanding. What is your email to purchase memberships? Um. My email to purchase memberships. I thought you could just purchase memberships. I didn't think you needed an email. CurtisShawTV at Hotmail.com. But I'm pretty sure you can just... Um, I don't know if you even need the membership. But, hey, I'm not sure how it works, to be honest. Eddie will get us the goal in the Champions League final. Trust me, I've seen it. Imagine. Imagine how shameless it would be if Eddie and Havertz or... You know what I mean? They... Eddie scored the winning goal in the Champions League final at Wembley. It would be it would be the most shameless thing ever. But, you know, I'm, I'm here for it. I told you, I'm here. I'm shameless. I would, uh, I'd say I've always rated him and, and keep it moving. Burnley have the ball. This game is basically finished. Like, it's turning into an absolute training game again. It really is. Um, they are absolutely horrific. They're so bad. I can't believe how bad Burnley are. Make sure you get the likes up. We're at 1,500 likes, people. Big up to everyone. We're aiming for 3,000 likes. Great numbers in, as usual. Uh, as I said, apologies that the uh, some of the goal celebrations have been a little bit more reserved as uh, the VPN has been doing all sorts for me today. One of the goals, Saka was about to take the penalty. It started buffering when it came back. They was on the halfway line and it just said goal. I didn't even know if it, you know what I mean, what had happened. So, uh, yeah, forgive me. We'll be back to full full form on a Wednesday Champions League business. Um, and we've scored again. There's the fifth. Oh, my days. The donkey has scored. 29. Can you do something for me? Can you hit a little rich flex for me? And 29. Donkey Kai with the goal. <laughs> he scores for Arsenal. <laughs> That's how bad Burnley are, people. Donkey Kai with the goal. And it is five. That's the icing on the cake. Donkey! Donkey Kai with the goal. He's done it. Let's get the tweet up. I'm going to say Donkey Kai with the picture. Just so people don't think uh, I'm being harsh. Donkey Kai makes it five. Fair play to him. Fair play. Got his goal. See, by the end of the game, you can probably turn around and go, well, you know what? Couple of pre-assists and a goal. Look how they're celebrating all the team. One thing I'll say that you can see the players are in full support of him. You can see that. Um, so, fair play. They obviously like him. It's not a bad finish. Not a bad finish either. We want six. Donkey! The donkey done it, man. It's clever. Quick throw. Who was that with the throw? Is that Kivio? What a throw. To Martinelli. Did he nutmeg him? I mean, 
Oh my god, what a finish, by the way. I actually thought that was Martinelli. He's not megged it. Oh my god, he's kind of shut me up a little bit there. Yo, that's the best goal he's scored this season. He's not megged him. Oh my god. Donkey Kai with a great goal. That is a great goal, by the way. Absolutely brilliant. I thought it was Martinelli who was running that quick. Donkey Kai, what a goal. It's his nickname. 5-0. <laughs> uh, that is an outstanding goal. Absolutely brilliant goal from him. Donkai Havertz. <laughs> yo, I can't lie, yo. I have to sit down and just relax, you know. i got to sit down and relax. That is a great... Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what are you saying now about Kai, yo? I mean, I'm not going green screen, but yo, I'm going to give him some respect still. That's a great goal. I thought it was Martinelli running down the left. He was that quick. That's, a, that's more than a solid goal. He's nutmegged him and slotted it with his right foot. Havertz and Ellie. Donkey! Yes, Declan Rice is off. Get him off that pitch. Jorginho's on. Come on, one more. We want six. We want six. Kivior, what a long throw that was, by the way. 5-0. Donkey Kai. <laughs> Always rated him. Always rated him. I told you, it's the, he's been great. He grazed the whole first half. He had all the pitch. And uh, it gave him the energy for the second half, you know. I do not want us to concede a goal, though. We gotta keep sending out a message, people. You know what I mean? Five nil, six nil last week. Keep it moving. Uh Guna Birdie, big up big CC unit business, rude boy, big up yourself. George Guna, who cares if people don't rate him? World class, most important if he's banging in the goals and assists for us. F him, exactly, man. Sa um, as long as he keeps scoring, Saka, we're good. What a goal I've always rated Kai. Shameless, says Sam. Donkey Kai, man, jeez, I don't, yo, that's the best goal he scored for us. Nutmegged him and slotted it in with his right foot bottom corner. Pele said Kai Havertz might be, I can't, I, you know, like, you know in Liar Liar where Jim Carrey's in the courtroom, he, he can't lie. I can't lie. I can't even read out the end of what you're saying there. Kai Havertz might be, it says something class, W-O-R-L-D. I can't even read it. It's too much, but uh, yeah, I, I like the shameless enjoyment. Corner to Arsenal. Big up Jay Dime, new member. Come on, let's get the sixth. I did say five. I said we'll get one more. I like to think we get another one now. Ten minutes left. That Meg was crazy. That Meg was, was wild. Um, Donkey Kai, people. Donkey Kai. Can we get another one? Ten minutes left. Few candidates for man of the match. I would go for. Um, I'd still go for Martin Odegaard. I think he's bossed the whole game. Uh, Battle said, "I still think that Brentford was a more important goal. This one was. Yeah, obviously, obviously, it was way more important because of the circumstance. Yo, ties there again. You know, ties there again. Look at him. You have to respect him. He's always there. Lee Judges and um, Julian were on screen earlier. Apparently, I didn't see them." Uh, TMB, clean sheet for the boys, please. Gabriel and Saliba are really the best. They've been outstanding. We've got the best defense in the Prem, so it's uh, it's facts only what you're saying. Just been the most relaxed game I've seen this season. Tie on TV. Big up tie, man. Big disrespect. Donkey Kai, man. It's his nickname. Wow, Newcastle still losing at home. Tottenham losing. Beautiful. Absolute. All we need is Chelsea to do something. Just do something. Get a draw. I don't even mind. ESR's coming on. Get him on. Havertz coming off, I think. Was that Havertz? Was that Havertz coming off? ESR's on. ESR gets nine minutes, ten minutes. You know what I mean? Give him some more time. You know what? Well done, donkey, lad. Donkey! Nutmeg, I tell you what, mate, he'll get a new contract after that. He will get a new deal. 
Oh, man's man's cooping is it? You burn? Are you? Are you? What? <laughs> Yo, Havertz, I love it though. You know, shut me up. Not Meg's goals. I'm here for it. Don't worry, we're shameless. Few more goals, especially in a big game. We'll give him a shameless uh, green screen. I'm here for it. Uh, Gary said disrespect. Gary, information and entertainment, bro. Come on. That's the entertainment value. Don't care. <laughs> Kai, man of the match. Uh, Odegaard, man of the match for me. But I give him his respect. Smith Rowe's on. I'd love to see Smith Rowe score. Get us the sip. Corner to Arsenal. Can we get another one? Can we get another one, people? Another one. DJ Khaled. ESR's on. Corner to the Gunners. Can we get the sick? Nelson looks lively. He always looks lively, don't he? Charles said, uh, and I say it again, did Mikel tell the boys to be defensive in the first half of the season? The kind of movement I've been seeing from the team since December is unbelievable. Now they are blazing. Uh, do you know what? It's a great question, isn't it? Like, was it... Oh, I tell you what, Nelson's so quick, but it's the end product. The, um, the way we performed in the first half of the season is... I don't know... It, why would he have told us to be more defensive? But then why did we keep playing more defence? I think he got spooked by what happened at the end of the season. Because we conceded a lot of goals. And I think he felt that we needed to be more solid. So I think at the start of the season, he overcompensated a little bit. And, um, you know, all the control and all them new buzzwords. And I think now he's realised we've got to let the shackles off a bit and sort and 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 score more goals. Um, and I think that's what we are doing now. So it's great to see. We look a better team. Goal difference is key. Da Vinci said, big up, Kurt. It's me and the wifey watching as cruise to glory. Feel sorry for Ramsey. Feels like we got our Arsenal of last year back at last. It does. It does. And we're going to need that in the title race. We need to be able to smash teams to bits. Where is the we need some more red strike quote from? Uh, we've been trying to figure it out for weeks. Bro, you know, everything's just spare at the moment. You know what I mean? Red Stripe, Jamaican beer. You say, no, not that I, I'm not promoting drinking, of course, but sometimes watching Arsenal, you know, stress levels. So I just randomly shout, we're going to need some more Red Stripe. I don't know why, but just run with it. It works. It works. You know, big up yourself, daddy. Guna Birdie, Kai Havertz on the green screen, shameless settings. I mean, I like to save them shameless green screens for. The really big games. Um, I think he got it actually when we beat Brentford, when he scored. Um, but listen, he'll get he'll get his um, he'll get his flowers. Important goal. I think he got one or two pre assists. I said it, people. I said it. We've been different since the gold stake. I don't know what the hell was in that gold stake, but there was magic in it. We've been different since that gold stake. It's mad. We are we are smoking teams at the moment. I mean, I'm looking at the moment. We come back from Dubai. And when was the first game after Dubai? Crystal Palace, 5-0. Then we play Forest, 2-1. So that's seven goals. Three against Liverpool, 10 goals in three games. Six against West Ham, 16 goals in four games. And now another five, 21 goals. 21 goals in five games. 21 savage business, people. 21. 21 savage business. 21 goals in five games. We are cooking. And this is in Burnley. And it ain't an easy place to go. Although, I think uh, Vincent Company, man, trying to play ticky tacker with Burnley in the Prem, it was never going to work, mate. You ain't got the facilities for that. Uh, uh, e. Ross said, don't forget this is Burnley. You're not wrong, bro. You are not wrong. I mean, just looking ahead, Porto on Wednesday, huge game. Um, Newcastle at home next Saturday, 8 o'clock kickoff. Newcastle currently, I believe, as long as I'm still up to date, Newcastle are losing 2-1 at home to Bournemouth. They've sort of fell off a little bit. I'd like to think that we would beat Newcastle at home. Um and then after that, Sheffield United away, Brentford at home. That could be another three league wins, in my opinion. And then Porto again. 
and then you got Chelsea at home before the international break. I would say genuinely, Arsenal have got to win every league game before that international break. Newcastle at home, got to beat them. Sheffield United away, you've got to batter them. Brentford at home, batter them. They're all over the place. Chelsea at home, you've got to beat them. They're mid-table dons. Then you go international break. You come back first game after the international break. Man City at the Etihad, 31st of March. You would hope by then maybe Partey, Zinchenko, Jesus would be back. Offer us a little bit more squad depth. So uh, it's there for us. It's there, but we're going. You know, it's it's going to be difficult. Alfred said we might be better off with Kivio at left back. The team don't have to worry about having to protect that side as much and focus more on attacking. I mean. He's played well today, and I thought he did well against West Ham, so I'm going to give him some credit. My concern is just, I don't know, against better wingers. I mean, Kudus, a very good winger last week, and he kept him quiet. I'm still not fully convinced, but I suppose the thing you could argue is, is Kivior a better defender or Zinchenko defensively? Um, certainly on the ball, Zinchenko's better, but maybe Kivior's a better defender. Um, obviously, at centre back, he's far better, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I'm hoping by the end of the season, we're choosing out of Tommy Asu or, or Timber, you know what I mean, who are really top quality defenders. Um, surely Tommy Asu will be back next week. He should have been back already. Um, you still think Partey is coming back? Well, I know a lot of people have been saying. Um, a lot of people have been saying in the chat he's not going to play the rest of the season. Obviously, different conversations being had there, but I don't want to talk about things like that unless they're factually proven. But, um, yeah, when is he going to be back? I don't know. Trixie said, Big C, you've got no faith in Kivyori. Silenced Lewandowski and Haaland, so he has it in the bag. Thing is, playing in his best position. Do you know what I mean? Do I have a lot of faith in Kivyori at left back? My honest answer is no. I don't, because he's not a natural left back. There's some wingers in the league that I think would cause him big problems. Um, at centre-back, maybe he's a very good player there, but obviously he's not going to get in at centre-back because of Gabriel and Saliba. So he might stay in at centre-back. We know that the manager loves to go um, do the homework that Pep does, and um, he played uh, Nathan Ake at left-back, who's a centre-back. So... He may go with that. Mr. Said Expression is going to have a meltdown. I can't wait to see it. That's what we're here for, people. Tottenham losing 2-1 to Wolves. Um, 31st of March says Giraffe King, a date with destiny. That game, wow. I've said it all for the last few weeks. we got to go and beat Man City at the Etihad. I genuinely believe it. If you're going to win the league, I think you've got to go there and clip them up. I know they're a great team, but I think they're beatable. we got to go there and beat them. Listen, you go to Man City and draw, it's not a bad result at all if you win the majority of your other games. But I think we've got to, just to prove a point, I think we've got to go and beat Man City at the Etihad and shut them down. I really do. Um, Ten minutes added on, by the way. Obviously, terrible injury to uh, Aaron Ramsey, brother of Jacob Ramsey. Looks like a bad, bad injury, possibly on his knee. Uh, left the pitch, um, having to use oxygen and on a stretcher, so hopefully not a serious injury, but doesn't look good. 5-0 uh, today, by the way, is uh, would put Arsenal top uh, when it comes to goal difference. We would now be on plus 36. Liverpool on plus 35, Man City on plus 31. City, though, with two games in hand. One of them, obviously, is tonight against Chelsea. Just trying to look at their fixtures just to see who they've got coming up. Man City's next three... League games, Chelsea at home, Brentford at home, Bournemouth away. If they beat Chelsea tonight, those next two are fairly straightforward. Brentford and Bournemouth, I think they will hammer both of them. They've then got Luton away in the FA Cup. They've then got a Manchester derby against United. They've then got Copenhagen in the return leg. They've then got Liverpool at Anfield on the 10th. Ooh, they've got a little... This is... Man, Man City have got a difficult little march there. They've got Copenhagen. Don't worry about that. They're going to win that, obviously. They've then got Liverpool at Anfield, Brighton away, Arsenal at home, and then just after that, they play Aston Villa at home. That's where you need Man City to be dropping points. That's where you, they, you need them to drop points. 
Newcastle have equalised two all ninetieth minute. I'm I am I am clutching. I'm trying to find you know positives for us. That's a hard run. That is a hard run. Doesn't matter how good you are, and they've got a lot of games as well because they're in the FA Cup and and so on and so forth. Liverpool's run. Luton at home Wednesday. They're going to smoke them. EFL Cup final next Sunday. Then they've got a midweek FA Cup game against Southampton. Forest away. Mm, I mean, Forest winning today. Then they've got Southampton. No, I said that one. Forest away. Man City at home. Everton away. Liverpool uh, against Brighton. Then they've got Man United away. There's a few tricky games. There's a few. Eddie puts it over the bar there. Wasn't an easy chance. Uh, Alberto said, I still want another eight or nine. You know, if we're being incredibly greedy, and it may sound, sound greedy, when you're beating a team 5 0 and 6 0, I always have this thing in my head that, like, we could have broke the record. Like, no, I don't think any team has scored 10 goals in the Premier League. Um, and I know, listen, that's a real, um, it's a big ask, but. I've always had this thing. I'd love to see Arsenal score 10 goals. Naturally, when you go 4-5-0 up, psychologically, you do relax a little bit and then the manager makes four or five changes in, and it does you know, change the dynamics. Um, SC Guna, big up to you, bro. Get the likes up before the stream ends, fam. Listen, there's four and a half K in the chat. There's 62 of you on Twitch as well. Big up the whole C-Unit community. I appreciate each and every one of you. We are on right now 1.6K likes. Let's get that to 3,000 likes, people. There's four and a half K. So even if one and a half thousand of you don't hit the like button, let's get them likes up and let's get to where we need to get to, people. It helps the algorithm, I promise you. I wouldn't ask if it didn't help. Uh, we are so good. Listen, we're cooking it. It's nice. I say this all the time. For all the meltdowns, for all the Arsenal therapies, Enjoy the victories. Enjoy the victory. We've got a massive week coming up. We've got an exciting week coming up, by the way. Porto, Champions League knockout stage. Can't wait for that game on Wednesday. Newcastle next Saturday. 8 o'clock kickoff. Saturday night football. Massive game for Arsenal. Big seven days for Arsenal. Craig David settings. Um, so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. This is what we want. Uh, apparently, Calvin Phillips has been sent off. Which, um, listen, for me, and I know how football works, managers tend to pick players they believe they can trust. Kelvin Phillips, for me, despite how well he's done for England in the past, I'd rather see Kobe Maino go to the Euros than Kelvin Phillips. He's done absolutely nothing at Man City for two years, gone on loan to West Ham, he's sat on the bench nearly every week, today he's been sent off. Take Kobe Maino. 18 years old, huge talent, Man United. I don't want to see Phillips at the Euros. He's awful at the moment. But no doubt, it's Southgate. He'll just pick the same old players that he always picks, Henderson and that. Uh, Tottenham are still losing 2-1 to Wolves, which is brilliant. You love to see it. Uh, somebody just said in the comments, who's your man of the match? My man of the match today is the skipper. It's the skipper. I think he's been absolutely brilliant today. He's bossed the whole game. Martin Odegaard, um, I think he's been brilliant. Uh, and listen, I know people will say it's Burnley and, you know, they're not great and we know they're not. But you can only beat the opposition what's in front of you. He has dominated the game. I feel like we're getting the Odegaard back of last season, getting between the lines, picking out passes. Superb. He got us going. First goal, fantastic. I think that's the best goal he scored this season. Drills it bottom corner, volley. Um, he got an assist as well. Played the full 90 minutes, I think. Martin Odegaard, no doubt. Saka, obviously, you can have a conversation. Scored two goals. But for me, it's um, it's Odegaard, man. It's Odegaard. Um, even, even there, he had a free kick. Uh, what we got? Less than two minutes to go. Goal kick now. Spurs have lost, apparently. Is it full time, yeah? That's a great result for Wolves. Great result just for banter. Tottenham beaten by Wolves. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the Wolves were hungry. The Wolves were hungry, people. Um, great result. Nando's got well and truly cooked. 2-1 defeat at home against Wolves. Uh, Newcastle equalised 2 all against Bournemouth. Who scored? Solanke, one goal, one assist. Matt Ritchie and Gordon. This game's nearly finished. 
minute to go, less than a minute to go. 5 0. Listen, we'd have all took that pre match. So it's a great result for us. Um, and the clean sheet is good as well. I definitely don't want us to concede, although they are on the attack. Fried chicken for Spurs. It's a great result. Great result. Great day for Arsenal. Uh, yeah, Tottenham got cooked, man. They got cooked. You got Timo Werner up front. You ain't going to win many games. Looks hammering down with rain there. Tries to bend it in the far corner. Went just wide. Spurs, yep. Yeah, for, a Forest two up. When I just checked then, it said one nil. Um, no, it is two nil. Yeah, it is. Who scored the second? A one, you got the first. Hudson Adoy. Telling you, man, Moyes is in trouble. He's in big trouble. Mbappe or Haaland? I'm taking Mbappe. Killian. Can do more. Play left. Lightning pace. Is Eddie and Ketty on the ball? Can he get a goal? If you wait, Tottenham, stand up. If you hey, full time whistle goes, people. Another one. DJ Khaled. 5 0 to the Gunners. Wow. We're having a great time of things at the moment. We really are. 5 0 beatdown of Burnley. We all expected it to be light work. And it was. Listen, if I'm being greedy, I would have liked 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I will not turn my nose up at a 5 0 victory. Isn't David Raya doing good? 100%. I've shut up now. I ain't talking about Ramsdale no more. Lock that off. David Raya's doing excellent. Clean sheets. I mean, again, if you look at it now with David Raya in recent games, um, clean sheet today, clean sheet against West Ham, clean sheet against Palace, um... Clean sheet against Brighton. Do you know what I mean? He, he's, he's doing well. Lons, did he play that game? He did. Yeah, listen, he's doing well. David Rayo, I, I said this before. I said the less we talk about him, the better he's doing. And he's doing very well. Have to give him credit. He's doing really, really well. So, listen, today was a great day for Arsenal. 5 0. Um, let's have a look at the Premier League table. Let's see how it affects things at the top. Arsenal up to second place. Obviously could change if Manchester City beat um, Chelsea, which I expect them to do, but I hope they don't. Um, I tell you what, that's a big win for Aston Villa today. They needed to win. They've had a little bit of a blip. Tottenham beaten at home um, by Wolves. That gives Man United a bit of a chance to catch them. Don't forget, depending on coefficient, Fifth place could get a Champions League spot next season. Probably going to need an English team to win the Champions League or the Europa League as well. Um, because obviously Man United and Newcastle got knocked out in the group stages of uh, the Champions League. But um, Arsenal up to second, 25 games, 17 wins, 4 draws, 4 um, losses, 58 goals scored, 22 conceded. Now, when you think now, we have the best defence in the Premier League and we're also the second top goal scorers in the Premier League. When you think that we don't have a natural goal scorer, when you think how kind of conservative and defensive we were in the first part of the season, you can just you you can tell that you know we we could be even further ahead if we'd have had that goal scorer. However, it could be goals by committee. Maybe it's a case of we For this season, we're not going to have the out-and-out -out striker. You play Trossard up front. Because, listen, you look at it. Let's look at it. Trossard has come into the team in the last two games. And if you look at the results, I mean, Trossard's come in today. He wasn't at his best. He missed some chances, but he gets a goal, right? He gets a goal, which is, you know, what all good strikers do. You're playing up front, you get a goal. He played against West Ham. And he got a goal and he was fantastic. So two games up front and two goals. Now we're second top scorers. Who just said we are top scorers, not second. Now Liverpool 59, Arsenal 58. Um, unless I haven't updated that. I'm pretty sure I did. We were five behind. No, you could be right. Let me let me refresh that. I'm pretty sure. Didn't I say if we score five, we go above them? Yeah, you are you are absolutely bang on. That's, that's what the community are here for. Big up site, refresh button. 
Oh, no, we are. No, we've got the best goal difference, sorry, by one. But we're still second top goal scorers. They've scored 59. We've scored 58. But our goal difference is one better than them. So we have the best goal difference in the league. Uh, I'm going to put a poll up before we round up. Who was your man of the match? I'm, I'm trying to think, though. How am I going to narrow that down to four players? What four players do I actually put in the vote? I suppose you... For me, man of the match was Martin Odegaard. So I have to put Odegaard in there. Um, Saka scored two. Who was your man of the match today? I'll go Saka for the two goals. I'll go... Um, I'll go Odegaard because I thought he was fantastic today. I'm not going to probably go for... The... People say Martinelli. Who else would you go for? Martinelli was lively today. Um, Rice, it was... E Do you know what? We made such easy work of it. I'm, I'm going to go Kivio. I'm going to give Kivio some flowers. I thought it was another solid performance. The long throw was good. He gets an assist as well. Let me big him up. Uh, Rice, I just felt it was too easy for Rice. So I'm not even going to go with Rice this time. Um, I mean, Havertz scored. Do I do it just for vibes? Should I do it just for banter? Or do I go Martinelli? I thought Martinelli cooked the right back. I'm going Martinelli. Some people would say Havertz. I'm going Nelly, man. Nelly cooked that right back badly today. Um, but listen, Tottenham lost. Arsenal won. Today was a good day, people. Beautiful. Top Spur? What's that? You ever heard of them? No? Never heard of them, people. Never heard of them. Uh, yeah, listen. For me, man of the match, Martin Odegaard. That was the Odegaard of last season. Got between the lines. Kept the ball. Splitting passes. Scored a fantastic goal. Um, SC Guna said, Trossard, eight goals, 11 assists in, in essentially a season, mostly from the bench. It's a good point. We signed him at the end or the start of February last year. So he's had just over a year at the club and doesn't always start. So Ice Cube, today was a good day. You're right. You're absolutely spot on. Beautiful day, people. Um, yeah, let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up, SC Gunnar. Let's get the likes up indeed. Uh, gonna, gonna, gotta love Werner at Tottenham. We all love him, mate. He, he can't score. Uh, Enoch said, big up Curtis, sending my best from Kenya as a Chelsea fan. I envy what you guys have built. I appreciate that. And listen, just do us a favor, man. Just do something against Man City. You drew with them at home. You've got players who need to prove a point. Cole Palmer, Sterling against his old club. Jamrock Gunners TV. Again, sorry for spamming this, but please highlight this for our Gunners stat attack. This is the first time in Arsenal club history we have won the first five games of a calendar year. Listen, it's a magnificent start. Ultimately, um, it's not how you start the season. It's how you finish it. We need to continue. We've, we've put them foundations in place. Now we need to go and win the title, hopefully. Uh, Curtis, sell Jesus, not good enough. He ain't going this season. Uh, Gotanelli said, banging show as usual, Curtis. Really appreciate it. And um, thank you for the gifted membership, says Dan. Love this community. We'll end it there, people. We'll end it there. Who are you voting for as your man of the match? You are voting for Martin Odegaard, 71%. That was the Odegaard of last season. Absolutely outstanding. Thank you very much for everyone tuning in today. Really appreciate your support. Hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Burnley nil. Arsenal five. We are cooking at the moment. We need a favour from Chelsea against Man City. And I will see you all tomorrow, people. Come on, you gunners. Bless. <laughs>